We begin this week's session with an eerie stillness at the Dothan Research Facility, hidden away in a rocky valley on Zokro Prime. All that can be heard is the alarm system blaring on, and far in the distance, faint cannons firing as battle continues in the atmosphere above the planet. Then, like a blur in the sky, some sort of craft clears the combat and speeds down to the surface, landing in the courtyard of Dothan. An ebony shuttle made of crystal, it opens up like a bird beak and forms a shard gangway leading to the ground. Out walks a tall, muscular specimen in matte gray armor. He moves with confidence, displaying his helmet with four demonic horns sticking out, two protruding from the bottom attached to the helm, and another set expanding yet from his head. Wine-colored skin gives away the true nature of this being. He is a tiefling. The ironclad soldier takes a final step off of the ramp to exit his shuttle. As he does, the ship becomes airborne once again and hightails it back up towards the combat in the sky, leaving him to be greeted by a dozen men in identical uniform to the four creatures the party dispatched not but a few moments ago. Speaking of which, our team is held up in a weapons locker of the Dothan facility. Three members of the crew of the Vindicta and one black hole cultist meditate on their recent battle. They ultimately vanquish their foes, but not without sacrifice. Those of you with dark vision can just barely see the body of your late captain, Ren Herring, lying freshly dead at the end of the hallway, harrowing reminder of the severity of the situation. Though now, your mission seems clear. Search for any more survivors of the initial attack, discover the secrets of this place and what is held beneath, and eventually, get the hell out of Dodge. But where do you start? Retrieved my weapons and stuff last. Yes. Um, and I would like to, if I could, sneakily uh, go out to the where the body of the captain was, mm -hmm. pick up that laser rifle he had, because that's going to be a great weapon for us to have trying to get out of here, and walk back into the armory. Okay, give me a stealth check. Okay, this this is literally what I'm built <laughs> the for. The thing that you're, you're best it. at. Yep. got a nine <laughs> okay you get a nine you walk out back into the hallway as you look around to like check before you run over to his body there's no one around here except for the dead bodies that you guys dispatched um not technically bodies just the armor left from whatever organic matter disappeared once they died um uh do you want do you just want to take the the gun you don't want to search anything else I guess I'll search his body for any important items that I need to bring with us. Okay, investigation check. And then you can add a, I believe could I called I, it a plasma plasma rifle or something like that. Could I do perception instead, or do I have to use investigation? Perception is more like your, like your whereabouts, like perceiving what's around you, whereas investigation is like actively searching for things. Just wondering, because yeah. uh, one is plus five, one is plus zero. Right, I understand. That is a five. Okay, so you know that on him he has his armor, uh, which I, I believe anyone could wear, but you know it'd be very obvious that you're wearing the armor of your dead captain. Uh, you know he has an eye patch on him, which Is that the plasma rifle longbow. Yes, that would be it. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't find anything else uh, because. Most of his, like, belongings would probably be kept on the ship, and also you rolled pretty bad. Um, yeah, you head back to the to the weapons locker uh, without being noticed, as far as you're aware. Approach my comrades. Uh, yeah, so the, the two, the turtle is uh, with you down below, so is the human Reinhardt. Uh, you do know that the orc is still crammed inside of the air duct looking out the window um did did just the orc see the ship land or did all of us so the orc saw it land and i believe cock looked out a window and saw the tiefling walk out of it but i think that's it so can um first question 
yeah. is while William is doing what he is doing, can I can I take a short rest so that I can recover my spells? Uh, when you level up, you can actually uh, take it that as if it was a long rest. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, All right, per I'll yeah. Let's do that. Right. I, I I gave that to everyone else, so it's only fair that you get it as well. <clears throat> so, wake up, stretch. Clearly, did just as much, if not more, than everyone else. <laughs> yeah. And I proceed to look out the vent and see that the passageway has been cleared. So. I try and kick out the vent and dramatically fly down back into the area. So are you heading back into the locker room that they're in? Mm hmm Okay, perfect. Did um, did I know he was there? Um, yeah, I believe... I, I can't remember specifically who noticed him go in there, but I, I'm, let's just say that you do remember him. Um, if, if I didn't know he was... There, one of my knives is about to be like thrown at him. Uh, Devon, <laughs> give just... me give me an acrobatics check as you jump out of this air duct wearing a right. spacesuit. By the way, he's the only one with one of those on currently. But there's enough for all of you if you would like to wear them. The turtle it becomes a bit more complicated, but uh, we'll just say that they have a special one designed for you because they knew you were coming. Ooh, let's go. That's a 16 plus 3, 19. Hell yeah, yeah. You just leap down, landing on both your feet, and then just slowly point your head up and be like, yeah, I'm back, bitches. What's up? Sort of glaring at him, for I believe him to be a coward who ran from fu from battle. <clears throat> I had no weapons, man. I was about to die, so like... You're around the corner looking at him. <laughs> this quite a bit of tension in this room as you guys all stand around. I, as I was going I'm to say... Where the hell is this guy, Ben? If only I hadn't used one of my healing spells on the most worthless ally in the history of this ship. We must attempt to reach the commander in the lab. I have a key card that will give us access if we can get to the elevator in the courtyard. But we also might wish to check the rest of the facilities to determine whether or not any of our fellow crew are still alive. I feel like we need to stick together. There's always going to be strength in numbers. And considering that was the first time and clearly not the last time we're going to run into similar opposition, we should definitely try to find some, you know, friendly, familiar faces. So, uh, I can let you guys know that you would be aware that so far you have traveled through the majority of the facility on the upper level. The only place you guys haven't checked is the outside courtyard and then the little building that surrounds the elevator. Those are the two places you haven't been on the upper level. Um, and you know that you, you think you've dispatched all the enemies throughout the facility so far, but there were a bunch more outside that you Please. haven't combated yet. Can we see if they're still out in the courtyard from where we are? Um, you you can head back into the hallway that Ren Herring's body's in and check the window. Um, but uh, from where you are, you currently can't see them. So, do, and the or you can head out through the air duct that um, Devon discovered. The elevator also goes down to the second floor with the landing pad, right? Yeah, the, the sort of hangar bay area and like the welcome center and stuff. Well, while we're thinking, I'm going to go equip one of those breathing suits, because I'm going to need it anyway. <laughs> yep. Okay, you go in a... Me too. All right. But now, three of the members of the party wear suits that allow them to breathe. So, I'm going to try you... to keep track of how long you guys are wearing them for. Um, they last 24 hours. So, you can put it in your inventory if you'd like, if that will help you remember. It's they have, okay. like, an on and off switch, or fully take it off in order for it to stop being used. If you're indoors, it won't consume oxygen, basically. You can just lift the helmet. Is it 24 hours, or is an hour, or how long? 24 how hours. 24. An hour long. They are, they are built so that researchers can head out outside of the facility for a day if they want to, but um, no longer than that, because obviously 
We only have an hour of air, and it's a two-hour walk to the ship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since no one else is throwing any ideas onto the table, I figure we take we head out into the courtyard, whether we go through the vent, even though our tortle friend might have some issues with that, yeah. or going through the hallway, we get to the elevator, we go down to the lab, make sure nothing is down there, and we get the commander and rescue him if he's in danger. And after that, we can check the second floor for any other stragglers and get on the shuttle and leave. And then I turn to Devon. Devon, you still have the disc the captain gave us for safekeeping, correct? Uh, yeah, I still got that. Good. We, that, uh, we must not fail in our objective. I, I turn to the group as we gather. Knowing that cock can't exactly fit through the event, I offer my services as a uh, more stealthy member of our crew to make sure the courtyard is clear before we head through the hallway. Does anyone object to my proposal? No, nope, go ahead. No. Do go. as you do, my boy. All right, I go I through the vent. With my shell while he's doing this. Trying okay. to figure out how to get it Athletics? Out out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, uh, yeah, give me athletics but with advantage. Whatever the dex acrobatics? One. Yeah, the dex acrobatics. acrobatics. Advantage. Okay, let's... And then give me stealth with advantage after. Okay, so the acrobatics is 23. All right. And the stealth is 24. Damn. All right. <laughs> so you, you climb up on the barrels that Devon had set up. You I don't yourself. climb up. I just fucking jump straight through the vent. Oh, yeah, you got, like, you got like fucking spider moves, don't you? Um... So you just jump into the vent. You're you're looking around. You pull sort of the the way the window works is you like push your hands into it and then it like it has like a latch that opens up. And then immediately your suit kicks in. But you also notice that the vent that you open to get in just seals shut. Um, so you climb out. You're now on the outside up against the fence that sort of is the defensive line of this facility and you sort of crawl around to the uh, side that leads to the courtyard. And you see this armored soldier looking at the rest of the sort of, what do we call them, like invaders as they, um, they, they're not panicked, but they're like looking around, looking at this guy like, there's like a tense moment. Give me a perception check. Yeah, that, decent at 17. Okay. You look, you see about maybe just over a dozen more of these invaders in similar, basically the exact same uniform that they were wearing, these bladed arms and the suits that look like the night sky. And this tiefling looks at them and he walks up to the first, the one at the front of the pack, and just grabs him on the, on the throat and lifts him into the air. And you can't quite make out what he's saying, and then he screams something. Get away! And then he just his neck snaps and he falls to the ground. Like that eleven more of them. And then he looks up towards the sky and says, It won't be much longer, my friends. That ship is ours. Um and the rest is, of the Are they talking about the like the carrier ship or our ship? Yeah, the carrier ship in the sky as it's fighting um, these other ships. And he's, he's, he's looking up with, like, you can tell he's got this smile on his face, um, like a cocky smile. And then he looks back towards the men and he says, We must leave no survivors of this facility. The people of the ring cannot know who we are. And then one of the invaders speaks up and says, Well... What about the locals, sir? Uh, well, surely they're gonna ask questions. Um, and he just goes, the locals? Have you seen the natives of this planet? They're hillbillies. They'll just call this a sign of the god you don't. You cannot let anyone escape. And then another one's like, uh, there's a settlement not long from here called Knox Hollow where people not of this planet meet and make trades. Surely someone will send a ship with word and he's like, oh, don't you worry. The Trailblazer will deal with any ships that try to escape. And yeah, uh, that's sort of what you get as you 
as you uh as you look. Give me, so give me another right give me another stealth check. I'm just so tempted to pull out my pistol and start like shooting them. <laughs> <laughs> Trailblazer sorry, I'm taking notes. Yeah, fair enough. Sixteen. Okay. You hear another one of the soldiers speak up. There's a section in the back that we can't clear. I think we need some sort of security clearance, but uh, Sergeant here, and he points at the now dead invader on the ground, suggested perhaps explosives. This tiefling looks down at a body of one of the researchers, kneels down, feels around on their body, and pulls out one of the access cards. And he's like, I shoot the access card in his hand with my pistol, destroying it, hopefully. You want to do that? Yep. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Is it's this... healthy, so let's hope it works. Uh, yeah. Um, what do I have to beat to hit the uh, card? Hold on, I gotta pull up your character sheet. So you've got the silencer attachment on it, right? Yes. So they have to roll a perception check to beat a 17. I'm gonna see. I'm pretty sure you're in range, but I'm just gonna double check. It's 40 feet for not disadvantaged. Yeah. 115. Oh my fucking god. Um, okay, so give me just a straight intelligence check for a second. Not very intelligent. Let's see. 18! Okay, you know you are just, like, almost comically, like, five feet out of range to do this without disadvantage. I so step five feet you, forward. Okay, so yes, I... You step five feet forward. So, yeah, give me a shot, and I will roll perception. Oh, I hope I make it, boys. Oh, hell yeah. I got a 19, so that's a 24. Okay, so you're definitely going to shoot it. Yeah. Um, so this this blast of plasma energy shoots out towards the card, and, a, and sort of burns... Do I burn roll for damage, or is it just... Yeah, it's it's a card. I mean, you don't need to roll for damage. It just like burns it in his hand, um, and then he immediately starts looking around, and all of the soldiers start looking around. He's like, "Clearly, you haven't dealt with all of the survivors yet." Uh, it starts getting angry, um, uh, and then one of the men say, the, "The sergeant, he he sent people in, his best men, to look for them." I I I swear, I thought, and then. The uh, tiefling turns his back and says, Deal with this. I have a date with the artifact. Do not let them interfere with my process. And he, start, he says, You four men with me. The rest of you, find them and kill them. Leave no survivors. And then he starts heading. He's like sprinting towards the elevator. They don't have a way to get in though yet. Well. Because I destroyed the card. As far as I know. You, uh, do, uh yeah, what do you do? You, you, you're watching him sprint towards the elevator with four men with him, and the rest are now, like, looking around, trying to, uh, find where this fire came from. So. You've created at two, least a slight panic for them. There's two entrances to the courtyard, right? The one where we're trying to come from, and then, like, the one that goes to, like, the mess hall, the uh, rec room area, right? Um... So, do you mean the one you're coming from, the vent, basically? I mean, like, how many entrances to the courtyard are there from, like, door perspective? Um, like, windows. Like, how many window angles are there into this courtyard? Uh, windows? Uh, so, basically, if you go back into the mess hall, there's a window. There's multiple windows that you can see out. Basically, the, the wall that the door uh, is connected to is just one huge glass wall. Um, but there's only one door out here, or is there multiple doors into the courtyard from inside the base? There's just one. Alright, so... Which window, if I shot it to make them think that's where the bullet came from, would be the farthest away from the entrance, giving us the most amount of time to avoid them getting out here into the elevator? I don't know how you would pull that off, because the... How, surely if you shot, it would have blasted through the window if that's where you're coming from anyway. Otherwise, it would just look like you were shooting a window. You know what just I mean? trying to see if I could, like, trick them in some way. Right. I mean... Um, there isn't really... Uh, unless you wanted to give away, like, allow you, your team to go to the hallway and give away your position, there isn't really a way that you could do that. Do we have, like, communicators, like, electronic ones that we could communicate with each other through? Uh, no, not currently. That's All something right. you could buy, though. 
Um, so I am currently outside the compound, right? Yes, you are, like, looking out into the courtyard from, like, around the corner of the building that you just came out of. And is the vent... The vent... They can't see the vent, right? No, it's it's behind back where you would have to go back around the corner to... Uh, for them to see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the rifle, because that's not a silence. Just, like, shoot in blindly into the crowd, not trying to hit anyone. Okay. And then I'm going to use my... Uh, like, if we're treating this like combat, I will then use my feline agility, because I can just use that, and it won't be like an action or a movement to move. I have... Um, I can then move 30 feet, so I'll move back towards the vent, and then use a hide bonus action to go back into stealth, and then go through the vent, and hide from them in the vent, and like, shut the window, go back in the room with everyone else. Okay, yeah, um... So, you're, you're gonna fire indiscriminately, so you're not gonna, like, aim at anything, you're just gonna shoot towards the courtyard where the soldiers are. Yeah. And then you're gonna run back around to the back, climb into the... into the air duct, close it, and go back but, into the locker room. But like, go into stealth after I, like, leave their line of sight so they can't really tell where I came from and, like, distract them that way. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do it this way then. You, you won't have advantage because you've moved out five feet further, but you can roll a stealth to see how quickly you can shoot and then run back around the corner so that they can't see you. 15, no, 13. There we go. 13. Almost did my math wrong. But I, if I have any hint that they're like, no, still notice me, I'm just going to run around the compound until I get a better chance of hiding. Holy shit! I just, <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm having to roll a bunch of perception. <laughs> okay, so you got a thirteen, right? Okay, so you fire your gun and you sprint back around the corner, trying to be as stealthy as possible. And you immediately hear soldiers like, "Did you did you catch that? Where's the fire coming from?" But that's all you hear as you run back around the corner towards the air duct. And doing what? that, I will. I'll climb in so I can then talk to these guys and we can f figure out a better plan. Okay, you climb back in, you head into the locker. What you guys hear is as you're chilling in this locker room, he leaves, probably about five minutes goes by, and then suddenly blaster fire comes out and he comes sprinting back into the <laughs> locker room through the air duct. Uh, probably sweating a tiny bit. I don't know if cats actually sweat. Uh, what, what do you do? Uh, what do you say, Erebus? So their leader... I didn't get the name of I relay a bunch of so there was 12 of the black guard people that we fought one of them got strangled by their leader so they're down to 11 um the leader is a tiefling they're currently in the process of boarding boarding the ship that carried us to this planet um they don't want the people who sent us here to know what they're doing or who they are and the Trailblazer, which I assume is their ship, will shoot down any ship trying to leave the planet. Also, the Tiefling, he's trying to go after the artifact in the lab. Him and four others were sprinting towards the elevator. I tried to create a distraction so we could get to the elevator. Don't think it quite worked. So, um, uh, just, to, just to clarify, uh, Andrew, did uh, Cock put a, a spacesuit on? Uh, yeah, Cock put a spacesuit on. Okay, as you finish saying this, Devon, or uh, Erebus, you hear someone slamming something onto the glass uh, air duct that leads back into the locker room. All right, boys. Time to run out the hallway. Let's do this. <laughs> Hi. Oh, we're behind you. All right, so you guys want to start heading to the hallway back. You sprint. You run. Like, can we try to do it like stealth? Uh... Yeah, you can do, do... Is that what everyone's going to do? Stealth run? You're going to go sure. slower, but... Um, everyone give me Let's stealth checks then. Fucking go. Uh, 19. Alright, 19 for... 20. 20. Oh, goddamn for Reinhardt. Well, I, I have a... My uh, stealth check is plus 5. Oh yeah, true. You're, you're a ninja, I forgot. Mine is well, plus 7. I still didn't get it very well. 
Ooh, natural 20 plus three. God damn, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> we got it, boys. Back, they all we got it, brother. Uh, what did you get, yes, Andrew? Sir. 12. Okay. So the, basically what I'm going to do is you guys run, uh, sort of tiptoe run to the end of the hallway. As you do, uh, Erebus's, uh, God, we have cock and Erebusy. This is the worst group I've ever. So Erebus gets to the end of the hallway and immediately you hear the doors of the, uh, entrance open up and you say, they're going to come back through here. Uh, you hear someone say that. Um, so you're at the end of the hallway. The door across from you is the one that leads back into the mess hall, but you can hear, uh, probably two or three more enemies coming up through the hallway now. I gesture to them that we should go to the mess hall, get to the rec room where there's windows overlooking the courtyard, and bust through those windows into the courtyard to just try to give them no heads up as to where we are. Mm -hmm. Sounds smart plan. So Is that's that what, what we're you, You're going to head yeah. towards the... All right. Uh, e even with the, the 12 holding you down, you guys run across the hallway before anyone notices you. At that point... Er Erebus, even even at this distance, you can hear with your passive perception somewhere farther back towards the locker room. Yeah. Finally, a glass smash in as the enemies finally break into the air duct. Um, yeah. And bye, bye, when bye. that Respect. when that happens, the alarm system begins going woo, 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 even faster. The alarms going, and now the lights are flashing like every second, going just mental. Um, so you guys are now back into the mess hall. Uh, I assume you sprint towards the rec room. Yes. All right, you guys. Are, are, you, are, are you guys still stealthing, or are you full yes. on sprinting at this point? Okay, you're still, still stealthing. stealthing. Okay. You now hear uh, as you exit the mess hall, going into the hallway in between that and the rec room. You you see a, one of these invaders walk in and say, "I got him over here." So they're in front of us. No, they are behind you, entering the mess hall. All right. Coming, so coming from where you guys just ran in from. So our, we're in the hallway, right? Yes. You're, it, it's, uh, like, it's not like a long hallway. It's like a small hallway that leads into the rec room. But this is the um, door with the fucked up panel that wasn't quite working, right? Yes, it is. So I'm going to use my to thieves tools to sh shut the door and then like dead wire it so it doesn't open anymore. Okay, give me, uh, I guess, sleight of hand. What are the rest of you guys doing as you see this one spot you? Do I get spotted oh. because I rolled a natural 20? Um, I, I guess I, it, it's complicated, right? Because you're you're stealthing, but you're currently stuck in a scenario. I'll say that you're at the front of the group, so they don't see you currently. Mm -hmm. The guy's I'm behind just... you, so he would only see whoever's at the very back of the group. But he notices the group of you. Because uh, cock rolled well. 12. <laughs> If I'm if I'm in such an ideal position already, then I'll just hold my position and kind of wait for Erebus to make a move. All right. I start trying to intimidate them by making gorilla noises. Okay, gorilla noises. Uh, give me a performance or an intimidation, but uh, g actually, what sound do you make? Give me a, a gorilla noise. Oh boy. <laughs> in the fucking gaming cafe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <noise>. great. <laughs> All right, give me just give me a roll. My just in case. Uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right, yeah. Anyway. You, <laughs> you I see, trying, I only the, got a eight for the sleight of hand. So I was trying to see if there was a <laughs> different way that thieves' tools work, but I couldn't find it. Okay, so basically, this this is the scenario in front of you guys. Um. Devon has currently run into the rec room and is hiding around the corner, so he, he's unspottable. As that happens, one of the soldiers walks in and goes, I've spotted them, they're in here. Then, uh, basically, instantaneously, within the next six seconds, Erebus sort of crawls up, tries to mess with the scanner above the door, trying to get it to uh, do the basically break again and uh cock turns around and starts going <laughs> at the fucking guy <laughs> and he he doesn't get scared but he just stops for a second like i don't think turtles do that and then uh and then you guys get another chance what do you do i i try again all right i hold that's, my ground that's a uh, 13 okay so this time when you start messing with it you can see the door like ksh, ksh, 
begin to start closing and it's like leaping leeching forward but you haven't quite got it yet um i cock are you gonna try to move through or are you gonna continue your intimidation while still making gorilla noises, I'm going to start running straight at him. I'm trying to lock the door, though. You'll get stuck in there. Okay. Uh, I'm gorilla mode, William. I'm going to head through the door. The turtle, the turtle starts sprinting forth towards <laughs> this, uh, this soldier. Um, That's a first. With that, uh, let's roll initiative. All right. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Reinhardt. Yes. Is your go. Alright, I'm gonna head into the room. Uh, into the rec room or the mess hall? Wherever... Devin was. Devon? Okay, you head into the Devon. room. Devon, yeah. Sorry. Devon, uh, Devin. What, what do you want to do once you're in the room? You've only used, like, five feet of movement, so... <laughs> I didn't realize I was, like, right in front of the door. Yeah. I'm going to go to the side and prepare in case any enemies come in, too. Okay. If you want, you can, like, All push right. this chair out of the way and get around the doorway. All right, that works. Um, just so you know, as you, you're, like, right up against the both of you, actually, on either side of this door, there's these two sort of... They're, they're windows, but they're more like lookout areas. If you punch one and try to break it, you probably could make it through, but it's going to be tough. Um, is that all you want to do on your turn? Uh, yeah. All right, Erebus. All right. So the enemy's in the mess hall with me, right? Yes. Uh, he, uh, Cock has currently run all the way up to him. So if I get, like, behind this table here. Okay, yes, I can see him. I would then like to use my bonus action to hide from them. Okay. That just happens, right? I think I have to... I will look up what that does. I don't know what the hide action is, so let's look it up. <laughs> I think I have to roll for it. Then they have to do a perception check against mine. Something. When you take the hide action, make a dexterity self check and attempt to hide. Follow the rules for hiding. If you succeed, you gain certain benefits. Okay, so just make a stealth check. You can just do it without it being an action, I guess. That got caught, so I'm gonna roll it. That fell off my desk. That also fell off. I need to move my fucking mouse so it stops going off of it. <laughs> That's a non-natural 20. Very much doubt that these guys will notice you, but I will roll regardless. I'm just gonna roll. Um, okay. Yeah, he me, definitely didn't fucking notice you. Alright, then I will use my gun to shoot the pistol? one in front of it. Yeah, my pistol to shoot the one in front of Andrew. Okay. Um, um, and because I'm yeah. both... Because I'm in high, cause I'm hiding, I think I get advantage. Yeah. And then I also get to use my stealth attack because Andrew's next to him and I have advantage. So... Silencer is still on, right? Yep. Okay. Is that 40 feet? I have to make sure. That is 55 feet. So my advantage would cancel out with the disadvantage so I just roll normal. Yep. And 11, if I don't think hits. Uh, is that plus your modifiers? Yes. Uh, yeah, that doesn't hit. Unless I get an extra one for stealth. No. Okay. Um, then, uh, does he then notice me because I shot? Oh, yeah, I got a roll to see. Again, your stealth modifier is so high. 17 he has to be. Yeah, I, 9. Um, yeah, then, so... You line the shot up, lining, laying your hand on the table, and just blast. But he's so caught up in this gorilla turtle ch charging him that he does not notice. Then I'm going to use the rest of my movement uh, while still like moving in stealth, unless you want me to break stealth and move. I'm fine with you. Uh, no, I'm, you used your bonus action on this turn, so I'm going to say for this turn you're completely stealth. Then I'm going to go hide under this table the close distance. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the the scenario is really good for you because the lights are, like, constantly going black. So, like, in the second that the lights go black, you might just disappear somewhere else. Um, okay. I'm going to smite this man with Lady Wara's disco foil. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Um, give me your... What the fuck was that? <laughs> That's uh, 22. 
Yeah, that, that might hit, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Alright. This plus 2d8s. <laughs> Oh man, I just fully expected you for some reason to just like charge him and like pick him up and just like <laughs> continue going into the hallway, and just like carry him away. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, that's twenty. That's twenty-one damage. Jesus Christ, bro! What the fuck? What? That's enough to kill him, isn't it? Nope. Uh, but you do quite a bit of damage as you just lash into his chest, and this part of the armor just cracks off. And inside, you see that classic pussy flesh mix just pour out. And he looks up into your eyes, and he's like, it's not what I was expecting. Um, on his go, he is... Yeah, you roll pretty high on the intimidation, so I'm going to say this makes sense. <laughs> he's going to use his action disengage and run into the corner. Um, and then as he does that, as he moves out of your line of sight, well, not completely, but you see into the hallway, there's two more of these guys ready to come in. And on their turn, they're going to. Um, one's going to move here. One's going to move here. Both of them are going to attack you. I don't have my dice. Hold on. The one thing I didn't prepare for. Um, the first one doesn't hit he gets another attack uh jesus this is the problem even if i roll well it doesn't really hit you um that's gonna be that's gonna be 21 on that one so that one will hit and that one will miss so out of the four attacks these two guys can do one of them hits you that's gonna be eight damage so they are just uh, you still have your you didn't actually take your shell off did you no, I didn't. Okay, so you, as they rush into the room with their blade arms, you just, like, turn your back for a second. They just smash into your shell. But one of them gut manages to get around and just guts you in the side. And you're like, Ugh! Um, as this poke of the blade. How rude. Devon, it is your go. Hmm. Well, uh, assessing the situation as we currently are, I cannot see shit on <laughs> roll 20. So I will refresh the page. Um, am I in range of an enemy currently where I could throw my return ring at them? Uh, you could. What range is your return ring? Uh, it's 60 to 120. It said. Um, if you went back through into the mess hall, you could be in range. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. You want me to move you so you can actually see where you're going? <laughs> sure, that would be much appreciated. Where am I? Alright, so like, let's see, where, where do you have to be to be in range? Okay, you're in range now. Because the nice thing about the return ring is that since it just teleports back into my hand i don't need to throw it in a way that like guarantees like oh it's gonna like do which maybe kind of defeats the point of it being a boomerang but it's still shaped like a boomerang but i still kind of more throw it like you know fucking directly at someone compared <laughs> to like or like in this scenario where i want to be a little more stealthy where i'm gonna kind of like flick it like a frisbee and it's okay. gonna like curve back yeah. and um hit the guy in the side of the fucking head on the side <laughs> that he's not looking okay yeah i yeah. like that um yeah so roll for attack with your return right. right. rolling for attack oh dang that's a two plus five seven um yeah that's that's not gonna hit uh but, I immediately return the ring after. <laughs> yes. Missing. Essentially, the way it works is like at the second it like clangs into this guy's head, it just like disappears, like pops out of existence, and reappears in your hand. Um, what does it like look like? What's it made out of? It's kind of. It's basically just like what you'd picture a futuristic boomerang to look like. It has okay. like kind of metallic, and there's a few different lights, and like maybe a ray of light 
emitting on just the long end yeah. of the boomerang. Yeah, so it's just super futuristic looking. Awesome. Um, next up, unless there's anything else you can do for a bonus action. Um, let's see. I will just go... Can I go to diagonally to those tables right over there? Uh, I, I I gave you your max movement, so uh, currently you can't. Okay, but, yeah, then, yeah. yeah, then I'm all good. All right, Reinhardt, your turn once again. You are now alone in the rec room, uh, sort of leaning up against the windowed wall. Uh, what I would you like to do? We, we, did, we were trying to get away, and that was just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jacob, well, welcome to a D&D group with Andrew. Shit like this will happen. Well, I guess I am one of the strongest characters. I will charge in as well. <laughs> All right. I assume since you are a uh, melee character that you're going to use your action to basically sprint. You can go yeah. 80 feet if you do that because of your new movement. I, um, one, that's um, holy shit. Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. Go even further beyond. Oh, <laughs> right up, right up next to, right up. You just sprint on your turn, right up next to the turtle. He turns and sees you. Um, do you have any bonus actions you can do? You have to attack to use the the key points, I think. Or hold on, let me check. So Jacob, as you can use a, a key point, I'm not saying you should do this, but you can to dash as a bonus action instead, so that would allow you to still attack on this turn. But it would use up one of your two aren't key I, points. Aren't I right next to him? Or am I yeah. not close enough to attack? No, you you can't you could attack, but you used your action to dash, thus you can't use an action to attack. But if you use a key point, you could use the the dash action as a bonus action instead and then use your action to attack. I think I won't attack and save it for when I can attack the next time. So I can just do... Okay, yep, no, that's fair. Reinhardt's turn. Erebus, back to you. I will, because he's within 40 feet, and I'm still in stealth, unless you want me to re-roll to see if people notice me. Um, well, he didn't notice you when you shot your gun, so I'll say for now he hasn't noticed you. And I'm going to shoot him with advantage, keep the silencer on, so... They'll have to roll to notice me again. Uh, that will be a 18 to hit. I just rolled two sixes, so I got a 15 damage on him. God damn. So yeah, you fire into him, and um, you're using your pistol still silenced, so he yes. can roll to see if he notices you. Uh, I'd say anyone else with like in the room could also roll to see if they notice me and tell the other people. If you want to do it that way. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter either because he immediately gets, he got a 19. He turns around, sees you. So he has to like really look to see you under this table as the lights are flashing. And he just sees these two eyes pointing as the, not really smoke from the gun, but sort of the residue of the blast. Uh, just, yeah, it's pretty fucking freaky. Um, is that your full go? No. So then, in a moment where the lights are on, I move. Uh, I move here, and then as soon as the lights go off again, I use my hide bonus action and then go hide under this table. <laughs> okay. He's just like, "What the fuck is going on? I don't get paid enough um, for this." That was a eleven to hide. So he got a two. Um, <laughs> All right, cock. I, I love that. I like stand up in a flash where there's like, like <laughs> I didn't even know you. And then the light goes off. He's like, what? Suddenly <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> the great Ooh, magic trick of our time. Oh. All right, I'm going to use my bonus action to bless my weapon. And I don't think I'm... you can. Are you using bless or bless your like? Weapon bless or something. I'm using divine favor. Okay. Never mind. So there is like a spell called bless, and I'm like, divine I don't think you can favor. use that on your Your power, power is empowers, your, empowers you with divine radiance. Okay. You're using a. And then I'm a whack. -em. Yeah. He's basically he's using it on his weapon, but it 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 just casts it on himself basically. 
Um, yeah. I just got confused by the that's word. That's an 18. So, um, yes, that will hit, but I want to describe sort of what happens. Um, in this moment, you reach out to your connection of the anomaly. And in your mind, trying to empower your weapon, this weapon that your highest priestess gave you to help you on this mission, you feel something. Something deeper in the facility reaches out into your mind. And you just hear, please help me. And then your, your weapon comes to life and you go for the attack. That is 14 damage. God damn, bro. You guys are already balling. I can't believe I rolled 2d6 and got two sixes. I know, that's fucking ridiculous. <clears throat> Wait, that's not fucking that's right. Cheating. I just, I just did that math so horribly. There we go. Um, uh, Is that your full go? That is my entire go. Fantastic. All right. On their turn... Yeah, you hit again. So he's, this guy's not having fun anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna run. Away. I rolled a intimidate for my magical disappearing act. Oh, you definitely intimidated him. You don't even have to roll. He's fucking freaking out right now. Between the turtle just charging him and the fucking cat disappearing, he does not know what's got what's up. Um, but he is going to attack Reinhardt for twenty-two. I assume that hits Reinhardt. Yeah. Okay, uh, the first attack is going to do um, 7 damage. He's going to try to attack again. Misses that time. Um, damage. Okay. The next guy is going to try to attack the turtle for smiting him with such a holy weapon. He does not like that. However, he rolled a 3 and a natural 1, so he doesn't fucking hit you. Uh, and then the next guy is also going to attack you. He gets a 20, so that is going to hit, and a 3. Um, so that's going to be 4 damage to the turtle on these attacks. And you're just getting wailed on on your shell, just trying to hold back <laughs> these two guys, uh, protecting the group as the holy paladin you are. And Devon, it is your turn once again. You hold your return orang in your hand, preparing for your next move. Hmm. Um... Would I be able to run all the way up to where um, where Reinhardt and Cock are? Get behind Cock and use um, use uh, cure wounds all in the same turn. I think that you're ju you don't have enough movement to use a what is cure wounds a bonus action? Um, if it's a bonus see. action, then you can do it. I think it is actually. No, it's one action. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just a spell. I think eventually you can start doing cantrips as bonus action stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but cure wounds, I don't think you need to. Oh, teach trick creature you touch. Uh, you can move up to them this turn and then heal them next turn, but. Um, oh, are you cool? Hope. Ooh. Could I could I walk up to him and use guidance instead? Your one bonus action spell is Shield of Faith. Um, so yeah, Ooh. now now you have a you can either do an action yes. or you can. Yes, I will use Shield of Faith. Okay, and that's a bonus uh... action, so you can move the rest of the way if you want. And it can surround a creature of my choice, and I choose cock. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, okay, perfect. I can't believe I just said that, but whatever. I choose. <laughs> okay, so yeah, for use cock for <laughs> a concentration up to ten minutes. Uh, Cox AC becomes twenty-one. Hell yeah! Let's go. Basically, making him. Un, uh, unhittable, but uh, what does it look like when you do this? Where where is this magic coming from as you cast it out? I like I like pull it out of my ears. The power, 
The power comes out of my ears, in my hands, I irradiate it and fucking Hadouk in that shit right at him. And then the energy's like covering his shell in the parts where it's broken. It doesn't like heal it, but it like covers that part even more. Hell it's yeah. like he turns into a fucking tank, basically. More than he already was. So this Boom. this glowing ethereal shell comes to life. And as the the invaders see this, they're looking at it just like in shock. Um, they they're not quite sure if they can even hit him now at this point. Um, all right, so that's your movement and your bonus action. Anything else you want to do as an action? Uh, um, still throw no, your that is. Could I? Yeah. Yeah, it's an action to attack, so you could still throw your return. I'll bet. Yeah, then I'll Oops. use. I will throw. I thought it was if I use a cantrip, then I couldn't use a uh, weapon spell. You, um, I think Shield of Faith is a bonus action, and it, and technically your return rank's not a spell, so you can still attack. Uh, okay. All right, then I'll attack. Uh, I don't know how to select people, but if you like, hold down on this guy. Point. Okay, the guy. The one that you. I just slashed. Yeah. Sorry. If you hold uh, down on the map, Nick, you'll like create a ring. Uh, ah, yes. Yes, very good. Alright. Return a ring. Throw. Ooh. That is a 16. That'll hit. Roll some damage. We are... So, so because I used Shield of Faith and I kind of made a big fucking showboat of, you know healing <laughs> yeah. and trying to make the turtle man become god basically i'm i'm not i'm not like finessing this i'm just straight chucking it at that fucking guy using your and natural gonna, strength damn fucking right and that's going to end up to being um five damage so this is what happens you you launch out this ethereal energy giving these powers to to uh to the penis man and then you throw your return ring as hard as you can and it just sort of swings around and then comes back and slams this guy in the back of the head and he's just looking around Ugh! and he just falls over and his he helmet hits the ground <laughs> breaks open and this pussy flesh mix just pours out onto the ground and then eventually evaporates as you kill this guy I call my arrow back or my boomerang back and wipe off the guts on it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh. All right. Perfect. That's a great turn. Um, all right, Reinhardt, you're looking a bit rough, but you're you're still in the battle. What are you doing? The guy next to you that was attacking you just got murdered, and now these, these two guys uh, surrounding the turtle as, he's, as his shell glows with energy. What is All right, I'm going to move here and yeah. then attack the guy in front of me. All right, sounds good. Give me a roll. All right. Natural 20. Natural 20. All right. Uh, Are you attacking? Uh, I assume you're attacking one-handed so you can do the extra attacks. Yeah. Actually, I so believe I if, if you use... Um, this is just for your information. If you use a key point on flurry, flurry of blows, you can attack double-handed and then do two punches. You don't have to attack one-handed. So you could do the extra D8 damage <clears throat> instead of D6. But again, you'd have to spend a key point. That's just for you to know in the future. I think I'll just do what I usually do. Okay. Alright, so I'll use the D8. D6. Right? Wait. D6. Right. Yeah. Where is it? There it is. Four. Four. And then... Four plus... Uh, roll it twice, I think, for the natural 20. Uh, three. So you you roll the four and a three? Yeah, I roll the four and a three. So what... So... Or uh, that's 10 damage on the natural 20, and then you can do the two unarmed attacks. Alright, I have to see if they actually hit, right? Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so unarmed is 2d4. With, what with the, the natural fuck? Team. 2d4s plus 3. So roll 2d4s. <laughs> 3. 3. And a 4. Okay, so that's... And 3 to the 4s are my numbers, so. though. Alright, that's 10 more damage, and then roll again to see if you hit. <laughs> I think this dude's dead. <laughs> Alright, that's when I got an 18. Yeah, I'm still gonna hit. <laughs> this one's just 1d4 one plus 3. Oh, 1. So, 4 damage? Yeah. So you this just. Man's soul is not worth the body it inhabits. <laughs> you just <laughs> slam these attacks into this suit of armor, and he's just like. Ugh! But he just still. <laughs> Sit, stands there like, I will not fall. Um, all right, that's your go. <laughs> Erebus, once again, the man in the shadows, the cat in the shadows. Only 30 feet this time, so that uh, boy who just got whacked 18 million times about to get shot <laughs> by a plasma pistol. Hell yeah. Not 20. Oh my God. From behind the <laughs> this is like the complete opposite fight to the one we had last week. Getting <laughs> on them completely. Uh, do I hit? Jesus Christ. What, with a natural 20? Yeah, I think yeah. it might hit. Yeah. Do I we get to double my self damage time. as well? Or just the um, uh, plasma damage? Uh. Stealth is if you're not seen, right? So you th I assume you'd be able to add it. I still add it, but does that also get doubled by the crit? Nah, I don't think it does. No, any modifier wouldn't. Uh, well, yeah. it's, is it an extra dice you roll? We'll just say it doesn't for now, but I'll, I'll look it up later. You deal an extra 1d6 damage to each to one creature you hit with an attack with a finesse or ranged weapon. If you have advantage on the attack roll, you don't wait. Need wait, wait. So, so what's the what's the lowest amount of damage you can do on this attack? I still want to roll it. So, can we just? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying it doesn't. It you doesn't really. No. The lowest amount I can do is five. Okay, roll your damage. <laughs> the lowest damage. amount of. Ooh. 15 damage okay you you sort of come up from under the table for a second aim using the table to steady your shot just fire this pulse of plasma energy and when it hits where are you aiming on his suit of armor his eyeball you shoot right into his eyeball and like his head just like starts glowing for a second and then explodes with this fleshy pus going everywhere and his friend next to him is just like no uh just in shock and uh just traumatized completely now um as you mutilate another one of these uh, the one that's remaining needs to roll to see if he sees me uh that he does not what I do? <laughs> okay. no. then i will not move because there's no need to so that's the end of my turn all right, Mr. Turtle. I'm gonna turn forty-five degrees to the left and <laughs> whack the dude. There. <laughs> Just forty-five, not fifty-five, sixty-five. I, I overswing and I'm like, hey, where'd he go? We are demolishing the money. Twenty-five. Boys. Yeah, that'll hit. All right, and then twenty-five damage. Holy shit. Holy shit. What the fuck? Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Holy shit. All right, is that is that your full turn? Yeah, I'll use it as my my full turn. Okay. On this guy's turn, he drops to his knees and goes, "Please, please, please don't kill me." And that's all he does. Devon, it's your turn. Uh, I will. But to turn, hmm. not moving. I get my feline agility back. Woo. Well, I will move up 
Ooh, 10 feet, I believe that is, right there. Yep. And I'm just going to... I'll just throw my return ring and... <laughs> yep, okay, perfect. Fuck her right here. <laughs> it's like, I want to get a little closer and just... Bonita. Just subtly move up, aim, and then throw. Perfect. And here we go. Baboom. Oh, that's a 19. That'll hit. And rolling for damage. That is a 5 damage again. Holy shit. Okay. You continue to wail into this guy, and, like, he's like... <laughs> um, actually, uh... Andrew, give me a intimidation with advantage as you guys continue to attack this guy. Because he's with your glowing shell, you're who he's currently most scared of. He doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> uh, that's a twenty-one. All right, yeah, he's just he's just bowing down. And he's like, please, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you anything, please. Uh, is that your full go, Devon? It will. Yeah, just. I, I see the writing on the wall, though, so I am going to move up <laughs> to, to, honestly, just right next to him. Just be like, yep, yep, it's over. All right. Tell Rein us everything. Reinhardt, your, your turn. Oh, uh, all right. I'll, uh, smash his up brains in the to here. <laughs> no, what, what do I roll to make him, uh, Tell us everything. <laughs> oh, uh, well, if if you guys want to... That would essentially end combat, assuming no one else yeah. wants to attack it. That's what I would like to do as All well. Right. Is everyone in agreement that we're ending combat? Yeah, before I, before we do that, I want to uh, use oh, no. command to just whisper repent in his ear. <laughs> uh, you can do that out of combat, right? Yeah, he can. I just yeah, it's I a could saving throw, right? Uh, yeah, I can look at what it is. And you're telling him to repent. Yes. That's it. That's the the word you're using. That, that that is the word. Okay. Let's see. All right. You whisper into his whatever his mask, basically, <laughs> and he looks up at you, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I." I didn't have a choice. What do you guys do? I, I approach the group. Okay. Yeah, we can... Uh, Where do you come from? End initiative. Uh, and I walk up to him, and I push... I put my pistol to, like, the side of his head. Okay. And I'm like, you tell us what your group is, what you're doing here, and everything we need to know to know why this base was raided. You'll end up on the floor like your friends. Hold on, I'm gonna make him make an intelligence check. So he basically is like, If I'm gonna tell you things, we have to be smart about this. I don't have a lot of say on how long I live. If I say anything too specific. Um, Erebus, with your passive perception, you can now hear certain you see other soldiers struggling with the door to the weapon locker but they are trying to open it up like shh, 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 shh. come on keep keep smashing basically is what you hear from well i'm trying to interpret i like i look to court who i met cock who i imagine imagine is the most intimidating person here i uh, sort of like you continue the interrogation and then i kneel down start fiddling with the keypad on this door uh -huh. to then slam it shut and like lock it like I was trying to do with the other door. Yeah, I'll, I'll say um, you can have advantage now because you're basically putting your full effort. There's like no current threat. Um, 21. Know, 21, yeah. So the door just and the, the red light goes on. Um, what are the rest of you guys doing? He's currently kneeling before you, his head hung in shame as he repents for his actions. We'll try an intimidation check. Okay. What what are you doing to intimidate him? I am just like, hey, you like that guy who got fucking demolished by my return ring? 
You want to join him? <laughs> All right, give me an intimidation check. He's gone full Joker. <laughs> hey, you like these scars? <laughs> That's a 19. Oh my god. He he looks up at you. He's like, I, I, I don't want it to end this way. I'm running out of options. Uh, I, I, by this point, have I like finished with the door? Yeah. I turn to him. So you can't... If you say too much, your suit kills you. So let's... You can't tell us why you're here, because I assume it's for the artifact in a way. What is your... Mercenary band's planet of origin. Could you say that? He just not. He just shakes his head no. Right. Could you tell us, um, which which planet from the sun, not sun, but whatever they call the star, you are the Hydros. Your, yeah. Which which planet from the sun are you? One being the closest, nine being the farthest. Huh. And That's... if you. Very interesting question. Number 10. And if you're not from any of the celestial bodies that orbit the sun, could you tell us that? He he, he looks at you, uh, Erebus, and says, um, do you want to know which planet I'm from or the group is from? The group. And he thinks... He says, oh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm like racking my brain roleplay wise, what he can say. Not giving us specifics. He says 10. He? Okay, 10. Would I know what that equates to? Uh, the furthest planet away from Hydros, the one that no one has real communication with, is Nyx, the, plan the planet of the changelings. Ah, so they are changeling. He shakes his head no. Or do you not say that out loud? I don't know. I guess I did. If he shakes my head no. So they're not changelings, but they work with changelings. He shakes his head yes, and as he does, his head explodes. That's enough information out of him anyway. I say as I put my gun away. And the sort of pussy fluid flings out onto all of your faces as you're like looking all down at him and then it just sort of evaporates into the air. Does his suit evaporate with him? No, the suit remains. I, because we want evidence, I pick up his suit and his weapons so we can then present them to our superiors. Okay, you want to just put a suit basically in your backpack. The yes. helmet is destroyed. If you want a helmet, you... Uh, the, I, I, the, I think the only helmet that is actually not destroyed are the ones back out into the hallway where the other guys are. So we don't, we don't need a helmet. Yeah, you, just... you, you at very least get one of their blade arms. Um, you guys look through the window on the doorway, and you can now see the others have officially broken through and are now heading down the hallway towards you. They probably haven't seen you because of how dark it is. But if you want, guys, want to get away, now's the time. Uh, do we wish to continue with our original plan of busting through the? window in the uh, rec room. Do I have time mm. to grab a helmet before they no. get here? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, Maybe, maybe Erebus would be quick enough to do it, or um, or Reinhardt, but it would be oh, pushing hey guys. it. <laughs> it would be pushing it very much. Just the local janitor here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, you guys are heading back towards the rec room? Yes. yes. Sounds good to me. All right, you guys head back. Uh, once you're inside, cool. the door sort of behind you seals shut. Um, and yeah, you're alone in the rec room. You don't hear the other soldiers anymore. We, If we look out the window, is the courtyard clear now? Uh, looking from where you are, you can just see the very edge of the courtyard, um, sort of towards the uh, the elevator area. Uh, you don't see any enemies. Especially with your passive perception, you don't see any. Yeah. 15 passive perception, boys. Woo! Is there a way for us to, like, carefully open the window besides just, like, full-on breaking it and alerting everyone? Hmm. Mm. Unless you can come up with something, no, because it is, like, it's a window that's, like, made to seal 
the Aaron, you would it would probably have to be like a combination of cock and Reinhardt just like slamming into it for like a minute if, straight trying to I, break it open. Could I transform the laser rifle that I'm ne never going to use again into a plasma blowtorch and then cut out the circumference of the window so we can just sort of push it out? I have no idea. I I don't know if that would even work. <laughs> you could shoot it. You could shoot the window. I turn to my compatriots to see if they have any ideas on what we should do to get out of the window. I chuck my return ring at, the, at it. Alright, give me a... Just roll damage. That's... Uh, uh, four damage. Alright, you throw it at it. Um, there's a little bit of like a dusty crack, but not much. I say, well, that's all I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> is there no like is is there like an emergency system that would open the windows in case the doors are blocked and there's like a fire I guess I'll just die uh, it, uh you could look for one <laughs> yes I'll look in the room to see if that exists okay uh give me an investigation check what are the rest of you guys doing that is a four I find nothing yeah, you're just looking around, looking at the corners, searching, searching under things. I'm dragging my claws on the glass to see how much I'd need to scratch to get through it. Okay. Um, see how easy it is to, like, make scratch marks in it. It's pretty cool. easy to scratch it up. Um, give me, like, a... How do you? What's an intelligence, but like with how strong you are? Just give me like a strength roll to to see, like testing out how much pressure it can take. Uh, t natural twenty. Uh, that is a twenty-five. Okay, you like you like feel the sort of strength of this window. It is quite strong. It would take quite a bit of force, but if you wanted to do it quietly, you'd have to. You know, you're in a sealed off room, so you would suspect that the only people that would hear it is anyone outside. But like Erebus said, there you can't see anyone outside, so. Yeah, I'll go for it. All right, you start slamming into it. Um, does anyone <laughs> want to help him or? I'm going to go to the door to this room and then do what I did to the door in the mess hall to seal this door shut so they can't sneak up on us this way. Okay, that's what you do. Give me sleight of hand with advantage. Anyone want to help with the window or? Just let cock do it. Twenty one again. After my um my character zones out for a moment, wondering how in their life they got to this exact moment. <laughs> I look over at cock and I see a man in need of assistance, so I go over and help. Okay. Uh he's gonna I start helping you punch, so cock you're gonna have advantage on a Athletics role, trying to just break this freaking door open or window open. Oh wait, 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 wait. Um, I uh, I also use uh, I also use guidance. Oh, on yeah. his roll. Okay, so yeah, you get a, a an extra D four on the roll as well. Is guidance permanent or is it just like once? It's it. Um, I think because I can it's roll four. once. Yeah. Before the spell ends. Because so. less is permanent until you lose concentration, I think. And does the same thing. It says it's uh one minute. Guidance is a cantrip also, blesses a spell. Never mind then. Righty uh, another strength roll? Or um athletics. That is a seventeen. Okay. So you begin slamming your fist, one fist, boosh, the next fist, another fist, boosh, boosh, and now you can see, with your strength, there is definitely be beginning to have a large crack that goes from one end to the other. And you're just slamming into this, and then as you do that, Devon also gives like a couple, poof, poof, couple punches in with his orc strength, <laughs> and he's like, he's not really creating the cracks, but once you make a crack, he'll like hit that, and then other cracks will start coming off, and within a minute. There's enough of a, a a crack that you just like hit it really hard, and then two sheets of glass just come out, and uh, there's enough of a hole for the humanoids to sneak through. You probably have to make a 
I don't know, st like a fucking a acrobatics to try to get through the fucking glass without stabbing yourself because you're so big. But I assume you guys want to start heading outside. It's Hell yeah. Make for the elevator. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, acrobatics from cock, and then the rest of you guys start moving towards the elevator. Perception check is, with your passive perception, is there is no one in the courtyard currently um, woo, woo. as you head towards the elevator. I'm glad I made that stat spell high. 24. Yeah. Oh you, my god. You just like slide through shell first. The shell takes most of the brunt of the glass and then you start moving with the rest of the party as you guys sort of jog, stealth jog through the courtyard. You assume that whatever soldiers were left are desperately trying to find you within the facility to take out the rest of the survivors. And you guys make it to the elevator. What would you like to do? Where would you like to go? The, Does it look like it was blast open with explosives like they were planning on doing? No, um, the elevator is completely normal. The room inside, like, there's a there's an elevator shaft, but then there's a room that is sort of around it. As you enter in that room, there's nobody in there, no guards. Um, it appears whatever he needed those guards for is further within the facility. Should we head to the second floor and secure the shuttle, or should we go straight for the commander and try to rescue him before... Uh, the tiefling and the four guards I saw go with him into his life. Commander time. No, no, I have no say either way. The commander can die for all I yeah. care. Well, I if, if he people. dies, they also get the artifact that we're trying to keep them from getting. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right, then, yeah, I guess we'll go save him. <laughs> all right, I pull out the uh, lab access card I picked up from one of the dead uh, lab technicians. Swipe it, and we start heading down to the lab. Okay, as you guys do that, um, Erebus, you don't need to make me a roll. The rest of you give me perception check. 20. 17 plus my 3. God damn, 20. All right, 20? 13. 13. My head's still in the shell. Uh, what did you get, Nick? <laughs> 5. Okay, so... Uh, Nick's head is in my shell, too. <laughs> Devon is, uh, like he said, he's focused on getting out of here. He's not really paying attention. The three of you, this is what the three of you noticed initially. You guys look up in the sky after hearing a large noise from the battle up above. It's like a pulsing noise. You see the Ring Fleet battle cruiser that brought you to this planet called the Theranian, and it's fending for its life against these swarms of alien fighters, these black ships just coming in, shooting, swinging around. They can't shoot all of them at once. And there's also this huge warship, nearly two times the size of the Theranian, and it's like, it's imposing. It's casting a shadow over the entire battle. It's a gargantuan black vessel that looks like a burned tree on its side and with ominous green mist that emanates from various cracks. And you see these like branches, and this is the part that confuses you the most because there's these branches that stick out and swivel and maneuver as if it was rowing the ship through space. Um, Devon, you haven't seen this yet, but Reinhardt, give me a history check. History. Yes, as the former soldier you are. 21. Okay. This design you've seen before, the sort of ship that rose through the Astral Sea, the, the design of the movement reminds you of when you fought in the Ring War against the Gith Yankee, who are these military masterminds, and they come up with their own designs for ships, their own designs for weapons, so that the enemy doesn't know what's coming. But this ship is different because the style is... The, the Gith Yankee are very proud craftsmen. This ship is very crude and looks like it's made out of materials that a ship wouldn't usually be made out of. But it moves the same way. Then, you all notice, except for Devon, um... God damn it. Uh, actually, roll another, roll another perception, because you would probably notice this. Hell, uh, get to the fire. Uh, yep, uh, now I do. 19. Okay. You look up, hearing the sound now. And the warship launches forth, the, the enemy warship launches forth a potent pulse of energy that streaks viridescently, exploding from the various fractures on board the ship, this crystal warship. 
and it covers the Theranian completely in this energy. And in that moment, the Theranian just stops. It just ceases all return fire. It doesn't move at all. It's almost like the energy was just sucked out of it. And then this wave doesn't stop. It keeps going. It launches over the ground and the surface directly under the battle where the facility is. And as that happens, the window that you broke, you could hear this like alarm sound blaring out and you could see the lights going crazy. It just shuts off. It just goes mute completely, leaving the facility in complete pitch blackness. And that's what you see. You all sit there in silence as this act happens. Oh. <laughs> is, is our smaller ship the Vindicta, right? Yeah. Was that on the Thuringian? Or is it somewhere else? No, that's what you took to come down to the planet. So we're on like a cruiser or like a frigate that then would fit in the carrier? Or are we on like a... Um, imagine it like, yeah, the Theranian was the ship that back in the day would have been utilized to carry multiple ships into battle. But now it's just used, because it's a time of peace, it's just used as like a transport. So you guys would have met up with the Theranian and it would have taken you the rest of the way to the planet so you didn't have to use up fuel and resources and stuff. Uh -huh. Is it de It's just dead in the water. Does it look like it's been blown up, or is it just sitting there floating, drifting in space? Yeah, it's like a ghost ship. It looks like it's just not moving. It's not. It, it's. It's like the the energy was just taken out of it. All right, does the elevator still work? Yep. You scan your card. You guys load on. There's the floors for um, the hangar bay, uh, welcome center area, and the interior research uh, floor that you now research. have access for. And that's where you guys want to go? I turn to the crew, to the research. To the artifact. All and right. To knowledge! Here in my garage. You press the button, the door closes, and you feel the hum of the elevator heading down. Wow, no elevator music? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator opens up. And... Let me get my notes. The elevator opens up, and what you see is a gangway that's been carved out of the sort of stone. Uh, it's been excavated out, and there's this metal plankway that you can walk up onto as you exit the elevator. And then directly in front of you, you see a door to what you assume to be a lab. It's a clean-ish white door that opens up into a, like a facility that's been built into the ground. So like inside, it's clean and nice, but all around is like this mined out facility. Do we see anything in this initial room before the lab? Uh, perception checks. Uh, 24. The, the luckiest fucker in the world. 23. Three. I got a natural twenty. Oh damn! So all yeah. of you got a plus yeah. above twenty, except for Andrew, right? No, I got Nick. seventeen. Oh, seventeen. Nick That's still pretty. Used good. in my shell, and now I'm cleaning it out. <laughs> I will say this. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are looking around, cock. Yep. As you, as the elevator opens up, and you walk out. You hear this voice in your mind, this young child's voice speak out to you, but there's difference in it. It doesn't sound like a human's voice. It doesn't sound like, it sounds almost rough, like maybe an orc, but probably not. It's like, please, please help me. I don't know where I am. And you can just hear it. And as it, as you're hearing this voice, your mind begins to hurt. Like you're getting one of these headaches again that you had before you fell asleep last time. Uh, the rest of you, you look around. As you stare further down sort of this gangway to the left, you see two other rooms. One of which looks identical to the lab in front of you. The other one looks 
much dirtier. Like maybe this room was already down here before these labs were built. And then all the way down to the left, there is a platform that sort of cuts off. Like it looks like it could extend out to become a bridge, but it cuts off and further down, there's another door that leads it further into another lab. And then to the right, there is a similar scene, but the bridge is connected and there is a door that leads further off somewhere in the facility. Is there any hint as to where the artifact would be located? Um, I mean, give me a sort of an insight check of the facility. All of us? Yeah, insight. anyone can do it. Uh, 17. 17? Uh, Andrew, you can have advantage if you make this check. That sounds fun. Yeah, uh, 17. Okay, so two 17s. 14. 14. 13. 13. Okay. Oh, wait. I, found, I finally found insight. So I got a 20. All right, 20. <laughs> um, the, 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 the feeling for cock is that it's... You're definitely in the right area. You're not quite sure. Like, with the pain in your head, it's becoming really hard to focus on where this voice is coming from. Um... Erebus and Reinhardt, further down to where the um, bridge is disconnected, you can see sort of up in the rocky area above the door, there's like this lookout platform. And you just notice for a second, it's like a split second, you see a female researcher like looking out, trying to see who just came out of the elevator and then look down, like just try to escape from their vision. Can we check out what this lab technician is trying to hide from um another question i have are you guys just moving freely or are you stealthing around the lab i'm gonna be stealthing I mean, i'm stealthing uh stealthy is healthy all right as much it's just been ingrained into me the stealth as much as possible i guess stealth yeah that's a checks. 20 24 24 for the cat you just see my piercing yellow eyes in the shadows 18 18 for the former soldier that is a 16. 16 for the orc. So I'm going to roll for me. I'm taking a shit. Okay, I will roll for the man taking a shit. You guys begin to head... You're heading towards the the bridge that has been disconnected, correct? Yes. All right, you start, start heading down. Erebus, with your passive perception, as you walk past... Sort of, you're, you're walking down, and then on your right... There's this secondary lab that's been built into the facility. You sort of move past the doorway, and as you sort of spy in for a second, you see three of these armored invaders, and they're looking around at this lab. And you can see, just sort of a split second, these items in glass cases, and they're on these pedestals, and these invaders are looking at that, um, trying to figure out what they are. As you walk by the next room that's now on the left, you look inside and you see another one of these guys. However, the door's now open and he's just walking in as you guys are stealthing past. And as he does that, you hear someone say, all right, you fucking bastard. And then just someone just leaps out and starts stabbing him with this, uh, some sort of mining utensil. Uh, everyone roll for initiative. 17. 17. Who wanted to go first between the two of you? Um... Uh, Jacob's going first, so it's in the right order. Alright, so let me describe sort of the scene you guys see. You are heading stealthily down this hallway. Nobody's seen you yet. However, the attack that this, it, what looks like some sort of elf researcher has just had on this invader, has clearly been loud enough so that the people in the lab on the other side would hear you. So... You have a few options. Do you want to help out with this combat, or do you want to continue moving down the hallway to try to get out of their line of vision? I, I, I just, like, help. gesture across my throat with, like, the slit motion indicating we should kill them. Kill the invaders. I agree. Let's attack. So, uh, so what, what, what's Save your plan? The do, you, do you want to... Okay, you want to run inside the room and attack the invader from behind. Yeah. He doesn't know you're there, so you're going to have advantage on the first attack. Is there a map for this, or are we just doing it? Uh, there is not a map for this part. Okay. I, I, things have gone uh, in a way I wasn't expecting, as to be expected with D&D. &D. 
Expect the unexpected. All right, roll for attack, Jacob. Oh. With if advantage. I attack. Are you attacking? Yes. Okay, then roll for attack. Uh, I got a 16 plus... So, a 19? Uh, that'll hit. Oh, okay. And then I'm using my... Where is it? My Vibra Staff with the... Where's the right one? This one, the D6. I got a 4 plus the 3. Or the, wait, 5. Wait, which one is it? Uh, it's a 6. Well, you're attacking with six. the um, staff first, right? Okay, so I got a 4 plus 3. So 7 damage. Okay, and then I use the uh, two unarmed attacks. See if they hit. Okay. <laughs> got a natural 20. Alright, so you roll the dice twice. All right, uh, thirteen plus the three. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay, then I then I roll the d four, which I got a three, and then I add the three or the five. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> you got a three plus three, so that's six. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you just start wailing into this guy from behind as he is being stabbed currently by this researcher. Um. That's your full go. Erebus, it is now your turn. Just that one who got attacked by the researcher, right? That I can yeah. see so far? Yes, there's just one currently being attacked. Um, Because the other three haven't come out of the first room. Yeah. All right, then I guess, uh, will I have advantage? Or do I need to hide first? Uh, he doesn't know you're there. All right, then I will attack. Um, a nat 20. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're the best. See, I was concerned after the last session that I have to make these guys uh, weaker. I didn't, but now I'm glad I didn't because holy shit, we would have been through the combat in like four seconds. Now, <laughs> uh, what's the damage? 18 damage. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, so you fucking launch the fucking pistol blast into this guy's back. He looks messed up. Like, he he's he was so shocked by the initial attack, and now suddenly there's th two other people also attacking him. On the researcher's turn, he stabs once again into this guy, and sort of, like, goes for, like, a neck shot, and the, the soldier just falls to the ground, and then he looks towards Reinhardt and says, We have to hide, quickly! And he darts behind one of the like, um, like mining excavator machines. Uh, up next is Devon. Oh, um, hmm. Well, I will kind of take advantage of the fact that I haven't been kind of. I mean, we're not totally noticed yet, but. You know. Yeah, you haven't been it, noticed it, it, at all. It, it, okay, so then I'm gonna use I'm gonna use can I do an insight roll to see if I could like maybe perceive uh, an opportunity for advantage in the area or in the turn to follow. Uh so you wanna like prepare to attack if someone comes out and have advantage basically? Right. Or or yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe in the environment, there's something that I could use that then could be giving us an advantage in maybe a spell or, you know, keeping someone in place. Sure, yeah. give me an insight roll. Insight roll. Ooh, that's a 16. So you sort of look around, listen around. You hear above the sort of door that leads into this next lab where these other three guys are, there's this pipe that's blowing some sort of air or something in it. And you think that if you sliced it in the right way, it would drop down in front of the door and basically cover you guys for when they open up and try to come through. Mm. So you could throw your... Kind of like a smoke, smoke screen? Yeah, basically. A smoke machine. Okay. I will um, I will try and throw the return right at that. All right, give me a, a an attack roll. Attack? Oh, okay. 
attack roll. Here we go. Uh, that's going to be four. All right, so you throw your boomerang at it. You slice it, but it doesn't come down. It just starts pouring this air into the hallway. Now there's like this mm -hmm. smoky mist in, in, in the hallway. Um, for me. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, you guys all have your suits on, right? Yes. None of you have taken your masks off? I have. Okay, cool. Nope. Is anyone in smacking distance yet, or am I going to need to move for that? Uh, the only person that would have been smackable, smackable currently is dead. Um, the other three are still in the other sort of lab area. You could go up to the door and try to open it, but... Actually, you don't have the access card necessary, so you could go up to the door, but that's about it. I'd like to go up to the door and knock on the door. Okay. You go up to the door, you knock, Politely. sort of looking through the window, and suddenly one of the masks of these guys sort of like comes up to it and looks, just looks at you. Um, I wave. Okay, you wave. Is that your full go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, very next thing, the door opens, shh, and one of these blades comes through. Fuck, I get so excited to attack and then it's fucking you. Uh, yeah, he, he, these two blades come through and you just sort of tiptoe back a little bit, um, not being able to hit you. Uh, but one of these guys will sort of pour through the door, um, sort of like getting up in front of you. He's like, we found him. <clears throat> uh, and then another one comes through the door. Uh, this one will hit you once. There it is. Uh, six slashing. Six slashing damage. Is it health you have left, Andrew. Two. Two health? Yep. The other one is also going to attack. Wait, no. Can he fit through? Hold on, I gotta think about this. Okay, he can't get through yet. The door's not big enough. But he will prepare his attack. Reinhardt. Is your go. You are currently in the mining area, the mining room. There's like various tools around. There's these very rustic tables that have like these uh, tools that would be used to like crack open rocks and things like that. And there's this large machine that clearly was used like as a huge drill to just like dig out these hallways. Um, and the researcher, this high elf researcher with this white lab coat and he's got this platinum blonde long hair. He sort of motions towards you. He actually doesn't have a lab coat. He has like a white vest. Um, has like uh, pencils in like a pocket. And he sort of motions to you to like... Um, I don't think he's... You probably think he hasn't noticed the other enemies. He's like motioning to you, for you to hide. What do you do? I'm going to tell him to stay hidden and then head out and join the fight. Okay. Tell him that there's uh, more enemies out there. Uh, yeah, okay. You uh, head back out and into the hallway area um, and you now see two of these invaders have poured out into the hallway around Cock and um, what do you what do you do <laughs> so sad I'm gonna attack one of them right. whoever one's closest yep you run up to the nearest one give me an attack roll 19 that will hit okay and then I'll use my d6 uh, 5 damage Five damage. Next attack. All right. Uh, Sixteen plus the three, so nineteen. That will Again. also hit. Okay. I got a one plus three, so four damage. Four damage. Okay. I need the other attack. See if I hit. And I don't hit. Two. Yeah. Okay, so you come in, slam your staff into his head, punch him in the stomach, and then you go for like an extra kick, and he just jumps over it. Um, I assume that's your full go. Erebus. Am I still hidden, or what I need to hide to go back into stealth? <laughs> You're in the middle of a hallway. Uh, the, uh, the smoke is giving like enough cover to where... Um, you could hide if you want to, uh, but you're probably not currently hidden. Then I'll bonus action hide just to see if I can do it. Yep. Uh, that is a 16. 
All right. You uh, sort of tiptoe to the side into more smoke. Uh, and then if I'm now hidden, I'll attack the one that uh, Deb, no, that uh, Reinhardt attacked in order to help damage them. Okay. So would I have advantage on this from my hidden? Yes. Uh, that is a 22. That will hit. Using stealth, so that is 12 damage. Um, 12 damage, very nice. Um, and then is... Can I... Can I do like a perception, investigation, or just flat wisdom check to see if this gas is like deadly to us? Um, give me a medicine check or a survival, whatever's higher. They're both one, so uh, eleven. Um, you don't know what it is, but you can intuit that uh, you don't want to breathe it. Then I guess I break my. If I can on this turn, unless you think I've done too much, I tell the researcher to close the door so he doesn't get poisoned by the gas and try to put one of his his uh, breathing apparatus on. Okay, yeah, you yell that into the room. And uh, to do that, I break stealth, obviously, so they know where I am. Yeah, that's fair. Um, next, he will run up to the door and sort of slam the the close button um as he does that the the sort of uh well actually i need to make yeah he, so some of the gas has entered the room but he's covering his mouth enough um uh with his hand and he just closes the door starts running back into the room somewhere devon um I am just ooh. I'm going to use this opportunity because I have I have the chance to attack a nearby enemy. Correct? Yeah. Uh, there's uh, two guys that have poured out of this door that Cock is standing in front. Then of. I shall use one of my new spells, okay. Guiding Bolt, at the ooh. closest enemy. Interesting. Okay. Um. What does Guiding Bolt do? Guiding Bolt, I will read its description. A flash of light streaks toward a creature of your choice within range. Make a ranged attack against the target. Yada, yada, yada. So, Interesting. until and the next attack roll made against this target before the end of your next turn has advantage. Thanks to oh. the mystical dim light glinter glittering on the target. Perfect. Okay, give me a, a ranged attack roll. What do you okay. add to this? Uh, uh, five. Five. Okay, cool. That is a sixteen. That will hit. All right. So, same as same as with the shield, it like pops. I, I like gather the energy from my ears. And then I, like, compile it into my hands. And then I just, like... But instead of, like, um... The Hadouken that the shield was... This is more like if you played Infamous, the first game. Where the dude, like, shoots the lightning out of his hands. And um. it's like... And it just goes all straight at that fucking guy. I guess it's basically just Palpatine, too. But what, like, a, what, what color is it? It's like, um... It's like a... Super, super light blue. Okay. All right. Uh, roll some damage. You get four d six, or is it sixty fours? Or I, I've already forgotten. I just read. Uh, it. yep. Four d six. Four d sixes. That's crazy. Sixty four damage. <laughs> Here we go. Actually, just four, one. Four, one, six, and six. Oh, shit. So that's 17 damage. 17. 
So this guy like comes running out of the out of the door. He's like swinging at uh, cock, and then just turns and just sees this blue lightning <laughs> fill his suit. Um, and you can see like the like, two of the the eye holes on his mask crack, and just this pussy liquid starts pouring out. He's not dead, but he's not having a good time. Damn right. Um. Yeah, is that your full go? Um, can and I'm still right next to uh, Reinhardt and Cock, correct? You're currently now only next to Erebus, as he is remain. The other two have moved up towards the door to attack enemies. Okay, well then, with my last action, I'm going to use guidance to help out with Erebus's next roll. Nice. What do I get to add from that? A D4. Yep, D4. Actually, Guidance is an action. Or unless I'm reading this wrong, I think Guidance is an action. Oh, it is? Okay. Then yeah. there, your one bonus action do. spell is the Shield of Faith that you can do. Shield of Faith! Um, so yeah, that that will be your full go. Holy shit, the thunder is loud as fuck. He's banging away. Um, Alright, so the one that... Not the one that was electrocuted, but the one that's been punched bunch of times and now shot is going to turn on Reinhardt and try to attack him seeing as uh, like this turtle just looks <sighs> okay one of them was a natural one the other one hits it's going to be five damage he sort of stabs you in the side and then the other one he swings and as he swings you sort of like deflect it with your staff and the blade just like flings off his arm yeah, I have a single health point Yep, and the one of the healers has two health points. Um, Let's go. Speaking of which, Mr. Penis Man, it is your go. Hello, I am the Penis Man. Hello. 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 I'm here to deliver you penis. <laughs> I am here to deliver you my penis. Oh, oh, yes, please. I smile menacingly as I turn on my disco flow. Hell yeah. Um, okay, let me... <laughs> Fucking flail of champions. Let's start the party. <laughs> okay, so... I think we said that your spell saving throw was 13? One minute, one action, 15 foot radius. Must make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, the saving throw is your charisma... Which is plus three, plus your proficiency, so fifteen. Um, My charisma is plus five. Is it? Yes. It says plus three here, but maybe. Where are you looking? Um, oh, on your character. Oh, oh, saving my saving throw is plus five. Regular is yeah. plus three. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. saving throw would already add the proficiency. Um. Right. Right. Uh. So yeah, fifteen, and then also. I'm just currently looking at your character sheet. The the uh, uh, shield of faith is concentration up to ten minutes, and since um, Nick has casted a spell, I'm pretty sure that would have worn off. Uh, that would drop. Um, I I think concentration only breaks if he casts another concentration spell, unless also he's been hit. Also, has it been ten minutes? Yeah, it, I. I I, my guess is that it's been 10 minutes, but also he's attacked, which would also cost concentration. Yeah. Um, so I rolled a... Oh, there's two of them out here. Um, <laughs> I rolled an 18 and a natural 20. So they both see you pull this thing out. Now. And just the overall aura of you to these guys now, they just know immediately to look away because you're just terrifying. <laughs> do the, do the, the rest, rest have to make... Go, go. The rest oh. of you have to also make saving throws. <laughs> I blind all what, of them. Oh, no. What stat is this? I believe it's dex to look away quick. I got a nat one. Okay. <laughs> His eyes burst into flames. 20. 20 from Reinhardt. Uh, this is a dex throw? Dex yeah, save? dex save. Ooh. Just barely not better. I got a five. All right, so the orc Devon and the tabaxi Erebus 
both sort of unexpectedly this this flail comes out and you're like oh he's gonna attack again and then immediately the balls start <laughs> flinging into this disco dance party song like da, 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 da. and both of you become blinded by these lights <laughs> there's like a weekend song about that right i've like inserted a playlist of party songs in the, the built of the stone. <laughs> um <laughs> There's a really dope playlist playing right now. Um, really hip with the kids at the time. Um, I'm playing Blinding Lights by the weekend. It's, it's not working out very well. <clears throat> so yeah, you uh, don't blind any of the enemies, but you do blind two of your teammates, so there's a positive there. Um, I believe it's an action to do that, right? Yeah, one action. Anything else you want to do? Any bonus actions? Bonus. Uh, nah. And I think you guys are are blinded, but at the end of your turn, you can make a consist, constitution saving throw. And on a success, you will not be blinded anymore. Um, okay. Luckily, I'm not blinded, right? You are not blinded. All right, these two enemies. One of them is going to move only one health. over allowing the other guy to get through. One of them is going to attack. He's going to try desperately to attack the turtle. Doesn't hit. Uh, the other one's going to attack um, Erebus. One of them is going to hit. I've, I've been t rolling so bad. That's five damage to the cat. They, Te did you, oh, technically they have a, he has advantage, yeah. So the yeah. first one I'll roll again. Uh, still, I've rolled a five. Is, I'm rolling so bad, it's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> well, it's good. It's good you're rolling so bad. After the first session where you rolled so well, <laughs> several of us almost died. Yeah. Um, all right, Andrew Reinhardt. Has, Andrew only has two health as well, so. Yep. And, and me at one. Nick, oh, I'm glad you are. need to get some healing in here, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Reinhardt, your go. Alright, I'm gonna attack the closest one next to me. Yep. And luckily, I can see. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, I don't hit with my Viber Staff. I rolled a natural one. Okay. Alright, my, uh, my other attacks. He sort of ducks, ducks the staff. Oh, Jesus Christ. I got a six. Plus that three, not, so the nine. That will not hit. Okay. This is where the comeback begins. <laughs> well, I got a 14. Okay, that'll hit. Plus three, so. All right, and then I got a three plus three, so six damage. Six damage. You swing your staff, he ducks under it, you go for a punch, he moves out of the way, and then you kick him in the balls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Erebus, it is your go. You've got one of these guys in front of you coming up with these blade arms trying to attack. You. Bonus action, disengage, move 30 feet away from him. Fantastic. You back away. Uh, and then I'll shoot him with disadvantage. Perfect. But I pull out the laser rifle because I can't, I can't be bothered to try to go into hiding since I can't, so I might as well not try to be silenced. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, is he neck? He is he then also standing next to Devin? He's di diagonally next to him, yes. So I'll still have the stuff at damage because he's next to an enemy. If Perfect. I hit. Which I will not. I got a five and a four. All right, you blast, and seeing as you are blinded, you sort of shoot to where you just felt the attack come from, but he just sort of moves uh, slightly, maneuvering out of the way. Um, uh, can I do the con save now? Uh, yes, you may. Uh, what do I have to beat? Uh, the 15. Wasn't it 13? Or was it 15? It's 15 because of his proficiency uh, modifier. I got a 15 plus 2. Perfect. All right. You're, the vision comes back and you're like, oh, yeah, you realize like, oh, he's there, not there. And then your <laughs> turn comes it. to an end. Um, Even though if I didn't have disadvantage, I still wouldn't have hit him anyway. So. <laughs> um, but we can blame right. it on the disadvantage. Up next... That guy's fucking dead. Uh, Devon, it's your turn. I'm first sitting there like, ah! ah <laughs> because I'm blinded. Yep. Um, 
But then can I try and move over to Reinhardt and use Cure Wounds? And I'm assuming that would be a disadvantage. Well, um, we'll do this. There are currently four figures in front of you. So, as you are blinded, I will let you roll a d4, and oh. I, will tell you, I will tell you which creature you heal, whether that is Reinhardt, Cock, or one of the two enemies. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. No, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do it, though. I love laying DM traps. Just for the um, meme. Um, uh, you just heal one hmm. of the bad guys to fall, and he just kills the other two immediately. The boss walks I just, in and gets healed. <laughs> I, I scream on. out in vain and then run in the opposite direction. You scream out in vain. Interesting. Interesting detail. Okay. <laughs> um, <Wow>. All <laughs> right. You want to run in uh, which direction? Just away from the figures. Okay. As you run, one of them's going to try to attack you. Uh, what's your AC? Uh. 16. Okay, he misses. I, I got 15. I'm very upset. Um, okay. They are now... One of them sort of focused on Reinhardt, but the other two, with Devon and the Tabaxi backed away, um, are going to start start trying to double-team the turtle. That is a... Okay, one of those will hit. Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> Which means, I believe, yeah, they can't do less than two, so the turtle goes down. <clears throat> Let's just see what it would have been. Four. Aww. <clears throat> All right, the turtle goes down. Um, which means he must currently make a death saving throw. Whop. I made a two. <laughs> oh, no. Uh... All right. Next, the with the turtle down, the other two are just going to turn on Reinhardt. Oh yay! I get to die. That is a five. That oh. one will hit, knocking you down. Yeah. They, they swarm you. Um. Please hey, roll. Please roll a d20 for your death saving throw, Reinhardt. 15. Plus All right, that three. is a save. Yeah. You, you don't add anything to a death save. Um, oh. Erebus, it is your turn. Bonus action card. All right, bonus action, you are hidden. No, I'm not. I got a nat one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, then I will shoot at whichever one is the most damaged of the remaining three. Sounds good. It would be the one that, um, uh -huh. the one that, uh, Devon just lightninged a couple rounds ago. Okay, that is a 15, no, 16. That will hit. Um, is there any of my allies next to him, or anyone he would consider an enemy? Uh, does it count if they're down? Doesn't say it doesn't. Then yes. There are two unconscious bodies next to him. No, if they're incapacitated, it doesn't count. Okay, never mind. I had to double check. Didn't want to lie to you. Come on, big uh, big damage here. Big damage. Nah, that is a six. Still pretty good as you fire into this guy. <clears throat> as he looks sort of into the smoke, trying to figure out where that blast came from. Or I guess you didn't oh, he... hide, so. I um, failed at hiding. I stepped out of the cloak stepped out of this fog for some reason. Instead of further into it. <laughs> All right, is that your full turn? Um, I use my bonus action. Use my action. I guess I technically have sixty feet of movement if I want to use my special ability. Um, but I don't want to, so I won't. So yes, that's my turn. As the uh, the door opens to the mining area, uh from the area where that uh, researcher was. The door opens and one of these invaders walks out and he puts his hands up and he goes, Halt! Everyone stop! Um, uh, and the other soldiers look at him like, What? 
but we've got people to kill. He's like, I, I have orders from the boss. And that will be that go. Devon, it is your turn. Didn't these uh, four of them come down here? These soldiers uh, seem confused at this point. I'll say that. Are they distracted and can I see now? Uh, oh yeah, you should have rolled at the end of your turn to see if you can see, so you can roll now. And that's so, constitution? That is higher than a 15. That is a 20 non-natural. Alright, so you get yep, you get a normal a normal roll. Okay, then in the uh are they there's still one right next to um right next to uh Brian Hart and Cock who are both down an enemy, right? Yes, there are currently three standing around them. Mm, okay. And how far away from them am I, would you say? Uh, you're most likely in range of, you're like 15 feet away, 15, 10 feet away. Okay, then I'm going to, while they're there, just dash up and cast, uh, Spare the Dying. Uh, would I be able to do it on both or would I only be able to do it on one? You can only do it on one and also you would be running up, because you have to touch them, right? Yep. You would be running up to where the enemies are. So you'd be using your action to get there and heal them so that they aren't dying anymore, but you'd also then be able to be attacked, basically. Because hmm. you have to touch them to activate the spell. Okay, then... Maybe not quite yet. Yeah. Am I close to... Okay, then actually maybe I'll do a... Sorry. <laughs> It's all right. It's a it's an important turn. Um, I'll do a perception check, or maybe could I do? Is there a way that I could tell if this guy's genuine or if he's just full of shit and there's something else going on here? Yep, you can insight him. Insight. Yes, I will definitely do an insight roll. Ah, it's not going to end well though. That's a seven. It's a seven. Okay, yeah. Um, as far as you're aware, another one of these soldiers has just walked out of the mining area and has told these guys to stand down. Well, then I am going to just uh, maybe take a few steps back, but not enough to where I'm running away. Just okay. kind of like putting it's a little a safe space. Yep. Yeah. Still um, listening, though. All right. Next, the very injured one that you lightninged. Um, he's like, "What? What is this? Uh, did you deal with the other one? Uh, we we were told to take no take no prisoners." And the guy that walked out of the mining room is like, "Yes, uh, of course, but perhaps our boss would like to speak with some of these, uh, just in case they have any information." Um, Uh, and the three of them just sort of look like, I guess, yeah, maybe he would want that. Uh, what should we do with these ones? They, they are very hurt. Oh, uh, leave them to me and you can take the rest to where the boss is. They just sort of nod awkwardly, very unsure of this situation, but seemingly believing what this guy is saying. Um, another death save from... The penis McGee. It's penising time. <laughs> I got a ten. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, after your go, uh, the other soldiers sort of walk up um, to uh, Erebus and Devon and they say, uh, Alright, we're taking you as prisoners. Uh, do you try to resist? Mm -hmm. I get look over at Erebus and kind of go in the, like, nod towards them of, like, whatever you do, I will follow in that if you want to go along with being would prisoners be for a while. Would I be able to just, like, step back into the fog and disappear? Uh, I mean, you can try, but it's not currently your turn. Will they, if I accept, what are they going to do to me? You have no idea. You cannot know that information. <laughs> 
Devon's nod, gesturing at our two unconscious comrades on the floor, like, heal them, please. And then I sort of, uh, step forward, pretending, I step forward to, like, surrender, but towards the most injured one, uh, preparing to just, that's what I'm gonna do. Step, fake surrender towards the most injured one, while right. gesturing towards Devon to heal our injured comrades on the floor. Um, so you, I assume both of you, you can't technically do it this turn, but you look as if you're about to do that. Um, Reinhardt, give me another death save. 13. All right, that's another success. Erebus, you sort of walk towards the most injured one and sort of put your hands behind your back, I assume, and act as if you're giving yourself up. Yeah, and then when I'm like five feet in front of him, uh... Would I have been able to while I was pretending to surrender? Like, I dropped the rifle on the floor, put my hands behind my back, grabbed my knives, and then I'm right in front of him about to stab him in the face. Uh... <laughs> you... you it, I mean... Give me a sleight of hand check. Technically, you can do this. It just depends on... Uh... Twelve. Okay. Um... The second you're, like, out in front of him and he sees the knives behind your back, he's going to attack you. But he can't do it on this turn, so we'll just say that's the end of that action. Uh, what happens next... Well, if if I notice that, then I would bonus action hide. Okay, I well, I, it, it's, it's rough because he technically used his action to attack you if he thought you were going to attack him. Like he Then I'll use action. my bonus action to disengage so he can't attack me? Well, uh, before you do that, what happens is the one that had walked out of the mining area runs over to the turtle and casts Spare the Dying on him. And as he does that, the um, the uniform of this invader disappears and suddenly before you is the researcher uh, that was hiding away um, and he spares the dying. So Andrew's on zero HP, but he's currently unconscious, but he doesn't have wow. to make death saves anymore. Um, and then he sort of looks over to the two of you and just, like, nods his head, like, do what you gotta do. And then as that happens, the, uh, enemies are going to, um, seeing your daggers will attack you. That's a fucking miss, because I fucking can't roll for shit. Um, doesn't attack Devon. All right, now, Erebus, you may, uh, disengage or attack or whatever you'd like to do. Since it's the lowest health one, I guess I would attack. Okay. Um... Is Devon next to him in any way, shape, or form? No. Uh, the other two are going towards Devon because he backed away farther down the hallway. Um, That would be a... I just want to make sure this is also plus five. Uh, 19. Uh, yes, that, that'll, that'll hit. And then that does four damage. Four damage. Is he dead? Nope. He continues stabbing into him. His armor is really torn up now. He's on his last legs. Would I be able to use my bonus action now? Yeah, because you didn't use it to disengage, so. Um, does it look like if I stab him again, he'll go down? Or does he look like he has more health than that? So that determines what I do next. He looks like he cannot take much more. <laughs> he looks very bad. And I'm going to use the bonus action du dual weapon fighting. Um, and I guess I... I didn't pull my rapier out, so I'll stab him with the other knife. Yeah, that's a three. That doesn't hit. Yeah. Uh, you go for the other stab. He backs away, trying to get away from you as you attack him. Um, he's like, oh, They're not accepting being prisoners! <laughs> uh, no shit, dumbass. <laughs> then, uh, Devon, it is your go. These two uh, soldiers walk up to you, trying to take you as prisoner, but then they see... Technically, they haven't seen because it's the same turn, uh, but they're trying to take you as a prisoner. What do you do? Uh, will... Hmm. I'm not close enough to Reinhardt to use Spare the Dying, and I'm not close enough to Cock to use Cure Wounds, right? Yeah, I believe both are touch. Yep. And both are oh. actions. Of the two enemies coming at me, 
what were the what would you say their conditions are in? Like how are they looking? Um, one of them looks like he's taking quite a few hits, um, quite a few punches to the chest. Um, the other one looks like he hasn't been attacked yet. Mm. I'm going to. I'll use. I'll use my just return orang at the enemy that had already been hit a few times. Okay. He's just far enough away that you can do it without disadvantage, so. Perfect. That is a 22. That will definitely hit. Rolling for damage. Finally, that is a 7. 7 damage. 7. Is that plus anything? Uh, no, that that's already with the plus included. Alright, so it slams into him and returns in your hand. And now they've sort of realized, yeah, these guys are not surrendering. Um, I believe that's your full go. Full go. Yes, sir. Um, I didn't hear no bell. The one in front of Erebus <laughs> is going to try to attack him. One of them will hit. These two blades come streaking down on you for six damage. Um, down to six health. Let's do this, boys. And that's his full go. For four, full go, as he says, um, he sort of clocks that the guy behind him isn't an actual uh, one of them. And he's like, I knew it was a deception. I should have never listened to this fucking guy. Uh, and then on Cox's turn, he's just unconscious. Um, the one that just got slammed in the head by a um, return orang will turn around and what would he do actually? Um, no, he would just come up and try to attack Devon actually. That's a seven and a nine. I'm having fun guys. Um, the, the next guy is also going to attack Devon. That is a six and a eight. I'm having real, real fun times here. Uh, Reinhardt, one more, one more death save, please. One more as in he could die or he could live? Uh, he's got two successes. Uh, one more as in give me another one. Let's see. All right, you are stable. Uh, you are not up. You are not down. You are just sort of unconscious currently. Um, Erebus is your go. Things are getting dicey, but you now Can have I this use new my ally. Object interaction to put one of my daggers away and pull out my rapier. Um, yes. All right, and then I will attack with my rapier. The dude standing right in front of me. Sounds good. Uh, sixteen. <laughs> That will definitely hit. Uh, nine damage. All right, you just jab into this guy's chest and sort of like hold him as he falls to the ground. Like, uh, I shouldn't have listened. Uh, and he dies. Um. And then does the other damaged one look like he's severely damaged, or is it sort of like mid-level damage? Mid-level. All right, then I am going to. Uh. Bonus action high. Okay. I got another nat one, so no. Let's see if they roll nat ones. No, they do not. Um, okay. Uh, but how far away from them am I? Um, let's see. Probably about 15 feet away from them. All right, so I'm going to back up so I'm maybe like 40 feet, 40 feet away from them. So I'm just in range, but... Might be harder for them to get to me. Okay. You sort of back up more closer to the door that the mining mining area is um, on this elevated platform. I, can I change that? Uh, sure. I just want to back up so I'm standing over the laser rifle I dropped so I can pick it up on my next turn if I want to. Okay, cool. Um... Okay, next is this elf looking at what he can do. 
range, 30 feet. Okay, um, he waves his hands and pulls out this sort of vial and this liquid shoots out towards Devon. And as it splashes on you, you feel this like uh, energy come come in come into you. <laughs> um, Ooh, um, hell yeah! You have our cock and the cum. <laughs> you currently have the spell sanctuary casted on you. So basically, any creature that attacks you with uh, weapons uh, must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. So basically, they can't attack you, or they have to attack their enemy. Because uh, they don't oh, have melee, yeah. or they don't have ranged attacks. Um, and the elf just gives you a thumbs up. Uh, and then... Uh, Devon, is now your go. I am going to cast Preserve Life. Because um, both Reinhardt and Cock are both at um, stable now, correct? Yes. Okay, so... Using preserve life allows me, and they're both within thirty feet of me, right? Um, let's see. I think so. Okay, so yes, uh, uh, they are barely within. Yes, they are just within thirty feet. Of me. Perfect. Then, okay, so preserve life lets me disperse ten HP to as many people as I want, and oh, um, interesting, and. How is your health situation uh, holding out there over on Erebus's side? I have six health. Six health? Okay. Then I will... I'll give two health to Erebus, four health to Reinhardt, and four health to Cock. Nice. And that's the only action I can take. I'm kind of, like, cocky now because of the <laughs> sanctuary that was cast on me. Like, oh, you're going to turn it at me? Cocky yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I said your name. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Is, is uh, it nice to be uh, here? I said the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. It's so funny. It's so funny. Yep. Man. Yes. All right. Well, speaking of which, uh, Mr. Penis Man, you are back up for health. Feeling good. You have got a new life. As you uh, open your eyes and get up, you realize that the elf in front of you is the one that you spoke to earlier, um, before all of this shit went down. The one that told you that he had a brother headed to the fleet. Um, the pool player? Yeah, the pool player. You recognize him. Um, the, uh, I, you might not remember his name, so I'm not going to tell you what it is, but uh, I'll <laughs> let you figure that out. Um, I just wave at him. Hey, hey thanks. <clears throat> um... After I, like, levitate off the ground. Alright, what would you like to do with your turn? I return. Uh, what, what is the enemy situation? Alright, so there are... The only enemies left are the two that are currently surrounding Devon. And they're about 30 feet away from you. Alright, I'm... I'm a pull up to the closer one. Yep. Is one of them not facing me? They're both not facing you. Fantastic. I'm going to pull up behind him. And whack. Hell yeah. Give it a, a whack. 21. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to roll a, roll high and have fun. <laughs> that is... No, not for you. 19. Jesus Christ. You slam <laughs> this flail on the back of his head. He doesn't even realize you're there. It's brutal as you just hear, like, skull cave in, and the mask just smashes open, and he dies. Yes, we got our heavy hitters back, Nick. Hello. Jesus Christ, you just brutalize this guy. He's like, all right, they're not, they're not surrendering. Attack. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, is that your full go? Yep, that's my full go. Uh, the other one is going to disengage and start running down the hallway the other direction, back towards uh, where you guys entered. Uh, he's just full on sprinting. So you, you think he's sprinting towards the doors on the other end of the hallway. Also, my disco flail has been changed to the boss music playlist. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> In anticipation of what might happen. All right, Reinhardt, you are back up and revving to go. What are you doing? 
I'm gonna chase this guy down. Okay, he's currently. Oh yeah, you've got like double speed, so um. Yeah, you can, you, oh, can, no. you can fucking catch him. Oh, can can I, I hit him? Yes. Uh, oh, that's a good point. Um, you can use yep. key to bonus action your dash and then hit him. Can I just go halfway? If you go halfway, you won't be able to hit him. All right, then I'm I'm just gonna go halfway. You d you really don't want to use key. <laughs> it's like your your class feature, this, and you just is, don't want to use this it. This is the time, Jacob. This is the time. Okay, fine. I'll 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 go away. I'll I'll go all the way, and then I'll use the key. All right. Use the key energy from your training as a ninja in the war. Uh, nineteen. That'll hit. And then one d six plus three. One d six. I got, I got a six, so three, three more. Nine damage. Nine. As you slam into him as he's trying to run away. I just headbutt him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next attack uh, with the fist, fisty fists. Fisty fists. Fifteen. That'll hit. All right, this is the 1d4. Yep. I got a three. So Plus six. Three. So six. All right, one more attack. All right. I got a 16. That'll hit. The fucking king of damage over here. And I got a four plus three, so. Seven. All right, you just wail into this guy as he's trying to get away. You're like leaping up. You like run up behind him, leap up into the air, slam him with your staff, two quick jabs to the side. He sort of stops looking at you like, how the fuck did you catch me? Um, <laughs> and that is your go. Erebus. How far away from me is he? He is uh, 60 feet away from you. All right, so I will use my full movement and my special ability Feline agility, which lets me double my speed until the end of my turn. So I move 60 feet and stand next to him. <laughs> Holy shit. Sounds good. And then I stab him with my rapier. All right. Roll for an attack. The 16 hit? Yes. All right. And that, because he's next to Jacob, gives me stealth. Just one shot this fucking guy. Um, so that's... <laughs> so that is... Um... Eight damage from the rapier. Eight damage. And then I will bonus action stab him with a dagger. You went in the way, bitch. Um, does a 13 hit? Uh, 13 just misses. Yeah, with the He's... bonus action attack, you don't get to, like, add any of your modifiers. So, it's harder to hit. The elf will just look at everyone now chasing after this guy and will shout out uh not shout but like he'll note he'll say to uh Devon and Cock that he's headed towards where I saw the boss going basically uh other uh, the other dude's still up i presume uh there's only one person still alive, and he's fantastic. I want to move over to him and whack him. He uh, is. You... While also wow. going, oh. <laughs> oh. All right, give no, me an that's attack. An 11. That is a miss. <laughs> I awed too hard. <laughs> and you could, re Andrew could reach him. I'd like to use my bonus action to fart yeah, as only... hard as I physically can. He only disengaged. He disengaged away from Andrew, so he could only move his base movement, and then Andrew could just move his normal movement up to him. God. Um. Uh, what did you say, Andrew? Do you want to do anything else, or is the attack it? I uh, use my bonus action to fart as hard as physically possible. Okay, you fart really hard. All right, the guy on his turn now surrounded. Uh. He knows that if he disengages and moves, you guys are just going to move with him. Um, he's just going to attack Erebus. That's all. Only one of those is going to hit. Let's see if he does enough to down you. That is four damage. You're still up. 
Ha ha! Stabs into the cat, <laughs> and the cat is just like, "Not today, bitch." Uh, and that's all you can do. I re- all I respond with <clears throat> is meow. <laughs> all right, Reinhardt, it is your go. Let's go easy on him, mate. Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> Hell no! This motherfucker dying. <laughs> all right, give me an attack roll. Seventeen. That will hit. Jesus Christ. Psychopathic ninja monk. I got a four plus three, so seven. Seven damage. You slam the fucking vibro staff into his chest, and he's like, please. And then I assume you attack again? Yeah. All right. (laughs) I got a 18. That'll hit. Uh, Give me a roll. You do plus three, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, roll the dice. You get. You said anyway. Five. Five you got damage. A five? Yeah, I mean, you had uh, to roll a one to not kill him. My three. Yeah, you had to roll a one to not kill him. Um, yeah, you just fucking punch this guy in the face, and he just falls over, uh, just sort of lying there in the hallway, between sort of just past the. Now? Yes, he is dead. Just past the. Okay, I don't know if he's under attack. Just past the sort of area that you guys entered in from, from the elevator, um, heading towards this door that he could not get to because you assailed him. All right, combat is done. What would you guys like to do? I approach the scientist. On my- yeah, the, the scientist is motioning you guys over like, we have to hide. If, if the other guy hears this, we're fucked. Like, is, uh, I don't remember his name. The commander is still down here. Uh, Commander, you're gonna have to be a bit more specific, friend. I'm sorry. Uh, the really famous war hero? I can't remember his name. You would know his name. His name is Leon Adrian. Is Leon Adrian still down here protecting the relic? The <laughs> he, looks, he looks around. Uh, Leon, yes, I, I heard. Uh, but there was a. He's like, as he's talking, he's like heading back towards the mining area to like hide because he's like I'm scared of the hallway. I'm performing self fellatio in an attempt to heal myself. All right, perfect. Uh, the turtle is sucking himself off in the corner. Um, uh, where, what are the rest of you guys doing as he moves? I walk up to Reinhardt and I use cure wounds. Perfect. Do we wish it's to uh, D8? Yeah. He, he's, he's clearly willing to give you information. He just doesn't want to do it out in the open. All right, I follow him into the hiding spot. All right. So uh, they... You can heal eight health. Reinhardt. Damn, that's really good. So as they heal each other in the hallway, he sort of motions you inside, and he's like, "Look, I, I, I was down here. Leon was here. He was with a Doctor Banks. Uh, he, he, he's like racking his brain trying to remember. It happened so fast. They, they. Uh, uh, oh, he sent he sent Doctor Banks with uh, the pilot uh, Jade something. He sent her to your ship." Uh, to get out of here. I think Leon was going to go back to the surface and try to help out, try to find uh, some captain or something. The captain's dead. Uh, very much so. so. He just looks he looks sad as he hears this. Well, if Leon didn't yeah, escape, bad. How dare you? did the doctor, did Dr. Banks and the pilot have the artifact on them when they left? No. Uh, uh, there, was, there was so much. They were going to lock down the third floor... They were going to leave us to, uh, well, they weren't going to leave us, but we got left behind when these others came down, and uh, it was just absolute chaos. I think I think someone else is still in here. I heard a woman crying out, but uh, yes, she's Yes, someone she's on away. the other side of that uh, like bridge that isn't connected out there? Yes, yes. Uh, Anastasia. I think Anastasia was working that shift. That's where the artifact is. Um, if, do you think you can make it to the elevator and up to the loading bay to warn Dr. Banks and the pilot to not leave without us while we try to get the artifact and get out of here. Uh, he nods his head. He like w- He's like walking towards the hallway and looks at um, Cock and he's like, uh, listen, friend, uh, I know we, don't, we haven't known each other long, but I, I just need you to know that uh, the things you said to me, they meant a lot and I'm not going to let myself fall into the same hole that the other researchers clearly have. Um, he's like, okay, so uh, head to Dr. Banks. He, he, he looks towards uh, Erebus and says, 
Dr. Banks, head to the docking bay. Are you guys going to meet us there? Hopefully, yes. If you haven't heard from us in two hours, leave without us. All right. And he starts heading off towards the elevator. Uh, yeah. What do you guys I, want to do? <laughs> I approach Devon and I'm like, do you have any more healing you could give me? Unfortunately, that was my last uh, spell. I, I approach I use one Reinhard. Cock. I'm like, do you have any healing you could give me? I tell him to kneel. I am not kneeling, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I just... I just start dry humping his leg and give him four health back. <laughs> Big ass turtle dry humping you. <clears throat> I just up to, okay, okay, across the cavern with the bridge out is where the artifact is. There's a Dr. Anastasia, I assume she's a doctor. Over there, I say we rescue both her, grab the artifact, meet up with your pool friend and Dr. Banks and the pilot at the shuttle bay or our ship and get out of here. Leon, if he's not in the, with the artifact, he's obviously dealing with the tiefling that came down here. We are not in a position of power to fight off the tiefling. Right. That makes the sense artifact. to me. All right, what would you guys like to do? How would you like to deal with this? There's a large hole that leads down quite far into an eerie blackness and a bridge that looks like it could extend across if someone allowed it to, but not on the side that you guys are on. How far is the... The jump? Yes. Um... Probably 10 feet. Is there like a lever or a button on the other side that we can see that would extend the bridge? Uh, no. Is there a way for me to climb up and then like sort of shimmy across a wall to the other side and then lower it? Um, it doesn't look like it. Like there's like this large gap on the wall. Like you could climb over and sort of be, it would just basically make the jump a little less long. It would be like a seven foot jump instead. I'll do that. See if I make it, boys. If I don't, I wish you guys luck. <laughs> All right. You want to climb on the wall, kitty cat style. Yes. And sort of leap across to the other side. Yes. As you begin climbing on the wall, you hear a voice, a female voice saying, please, please don't do that. Why not? And I used to see, Anastasia. You can see this female now looking down at you from this upper platform. And she's like, I can just bring the bridge across, but you have to promise that none of those guys are going to get get over here. Well, the four guards oh, we're doing are this all hard dead. Way. They're all dead. Cock just jumps one... into the pit. <laughs> the only one left is the chief. We don't know where he is. So, yes, none of them will get over here. We'll move across quickly, lower the bridge. We have a plan, but we will tell it to you when we are closer together. Um, she... Uh, give me a persuasion roll. And I got a 14, so 18. She says, Do any of you have access to this this area? I pull out my I key card. She sees it. She notices <laughs> it. She, she just nods and is like, Okay, I, I haven't seen you guys before, but... Uh, okay, I trust you. And she. I almost fall into the pit because I'm still self filating but I'm like trying to walk <laughs> over to where the conversation is. She walks off somewhere further into this area. And yeah, then... didn't just take this off, so I put it like back in my vest. <laughs> about, there's like a little bit of blood on it. <laughs> about 20 seconds later, the bridge and begins like three different sections of it expand out like a tripod and then connect. Right, like, we quickly, move across. Quickly, yeah. That's what you they move used across. to call me. We move across. All right, you guys all quickly jog across, and then it un unconnects and comes back over. And then what you see, the hallway sort of continues on into this greater room that looks like this is where sort of a large... Uh, th this room is bigger than any of the other labs. There's like a large excavated area with these white walls that leads further on into like a extended circular platform and then off to the side there's a door that opens up and you see this human female 
brown long hair with these glasses. She's like, she's like looking out, trying to see if maybe you guys deceived her and there was any enemies, but she's just like looking carefully. Just us, Anastasia. Okay, good. I, I, I had to pull the bridge back. I didn't want any of those guys to get to the artifact. I was very smart. That is exactly what they are after, and we have a plan, hopefully, to make sure they don't get it. Our plan is to take both the artifact and you and make for the shuttle bay, get on the Vindicta, and get the fuck out of here. You're, you're going to take the artifact? It, to protect it from the enemy, if that makes sense. Unless it can't be moved. I don't really know what it is. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really know what it is either, but... It's, it's in a large capsule. The only ones that were allowed to look at it were uh, Commander Leon and the Doctor. Um, she, yeah. she motions over to the room across from her and she says, That's Dr. Banks' office. Uh, maybe there's information on what this thing is, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. I haven't been al allowed to look. Dr. Banks is currently at the Vindicta, so hopefully we can get the artifact to him or her. I don't know Dr. Banks very well. He, him, yes. Yes, um, and then they will be able to have it and continue studying while we get out of here before we all die. Well, uh, currently, as long as the bridge has been pulled back, I don't think any of them can get over here. So, you d do what you must. I I, I will wait for for your uh, for your lead. I guess I go try to find information in Banks's office. All right, uh, Ar Airbus is gonna head into the office. What are the rest of you guys doing? You can see this all up. this. This hallway continues down to this large room, and then at the very end, there's this circular platform that has been closed off. I'll follow, Erebus. All right, you follow inside to the office. Can I just do a perception check of the area we're currently in? Uh, yeah, give me a perception check. Uh, 11. Okay, with an 11, the, the room that extends further on, the larger room... That has like these various tables and things people were uh, in investigating. Uh, empty. The 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 room that uh, Anastasia just came out of looks to be some sort of like command deck where they would like look on into that room and see what people were looking at. Uh, there's a control panel that probably controls the bridge. Other than that, it seems like you guys are pretty much alone. Okay. Then I'll just stay put for right now. All right. Uh, what about Cock? Yes, yeah, so what is Cock gonna do? <laughs> uh, what are my options? Other than self -elite? Uh, I, you tell me, what would you like to do? Ah, fantastic. It seems like you've healed yourself at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, at this point, I, I'm just doing it for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Could follow me and keep healing me. I ran out of healing. I I tuckered myself out. <laughs> Damn it! Basically, your options are: you can head into the monitoring room where Anastasia is waiting on you guys to make uh, d a decision. There's the office that apparently belonged to Doctor Banks that the rest of the group are heading into, except for Devon. I think said was going to stay out in the hallway. And then uh, there's a the hallway, the platform leads further on into this larger, like, lab area, and at the very end of that there is a door that leads into, like, this circular area that you can't see into currently. Did we ever look at the glass? The stuff in the glass? Or did we this... just, like, dip? No, yeah. you did not go... That was the one of the lab rooms you guys didn't go into. Okay. Then I will... <laughs> It's very interesting you ask that question. <laughs> I'll, I'll go into the room with the uh, woman for now. All right, you head inside. She's sort of uh, sitting on the chair looking out like, um, I, I literally got here like two weeks ago. This is fucking bullshit. Uh, that's basically what she says as you walk in. Um, she's got a mouth on her. Uh, the rest of you. Head inside the office. It's a pretty basic office. There's like a bookcase that like lines one of the uh, walls with tons of books. There's a desk in the corner um, that has plenty of papers just all over it and like uh, a fucking, you know, a, a globe. I don't know. Shit that like smart people would have on their desk. Uh, and then in the middle of the room, 
is something very interesting. There's a pedestal slightly raised up, and on top of it, uh, with a sort of tarp laying over it, is some sort of mirror. It's like this... Uh, sorry, keep going. Uh, it's just like this mirror. It's covered, so you can't currently see into the mirror, but... I uncover uh, it and gaze into the mirror. Okay. You pull back the tarp, and when you look at the glass, you expect to see yourself, but instead you see like this swirling mass of stars in space as it goes around. Um, yeah. Uh, Can I tell if this is the artifact, or...? Give me an intelligence saving throw, actually, Erebus, as you look in the mirror. Uh, 19. Okay. Without metagaming too much, what is the one thing that Erebus would want to see most in the galaxy right now? <laughs> it's a toss-up between his family again and the uh, Shadow Collective dead and gone. So, I don't know. Just, like, roll a dice and see which one it lands on? Yes. Even Family Odd Shadow Collective. It's one, so the Shadow Collective dead and gone. So, the mirror begins to swirl and suddenly blurs, and the vision in front of you shows a dark room with... A room with seven chairs. All of them are empty but one. And sitting in this chair is a centaur. Sort of, it's like a chair designed for a centaur. I um, voted for you, Kevin. <laughs> and he, he sits there looking at this piece of paper and suddenly, like the vision almost moves as you turn your head and you can see someone walk in and you see a man a tabaxi man with similar fur to yours, but older. It's graying now. You recognize your father. And behind him are these two Aarakocra, dark Aarakocra guards, and they push him forward. And you can hear your father say, You told me you would show me where he is. And the centaur speaks, I did, and I will. But first... <laughs> You must tell me something. Your father stops. Okay, then what? And the centaur says, How far are you willing to go to see your son again? And then the vision just blurs and the stars come back. Do I recognize the centaur? No. And that's that's what you see. Uh, um... Reinhardt, as you entered the room, you would have seen the same thing on the mirror. Uh, you would have seen that vision of the centaur uh, in this sort of Kansa area, and then the tabaxi being led in and questioned, and then it just ends. I cover the mirror back up and start looking for information on the artifact. Alright, give me an investigation check. Are you searching the books? Are you searching the desk? What? what uh, where are you starting? I'll start at the desk. Can I get the help action from Reinhardt? Uh, yeah, Reinhardt, advantage. what would you like to do? What, what would you like to help out with searching, or...? I was, I was thinking I'd walk up to the bookshelf, <laughs> the book off, and uh, study its history. Okay, yeah, you, uh, both of you actually can have, uh, investigation. Uh, well, you will have investigation with advantage, and Reinhardt, you will roll history with advantage. Not 20. Gee! Oh, God, it rolled. It slid. Uh, a I dice that never team. stops rolling. Alright, I will start with um, Erebus. Erebus, you look over the desk, you're looking at the various pieces of papers. A lot of it is just sort of this mindless scribbling about uh, oh, th this is amazing, I can't believe, uh, like, you, you're not really getting any sort of information out of this. He's just uh, talking very vaguely about something that they've discovered. And then, sort of, without, you're sort of reading through the last three pages and you notice that one of the sections notes that there is a command word to open the capsule and unveil the artifact. And he, he made the command word 
Ascro Perceta, which is the name of one of his old professors. There's no information on what the artifact could be. No, he was being very vague in the information written. And then uh, Leon, Reinhardt, as you're looking through these books, there is definitely a theme with these books. Like, the overall idea is, like, these are deep history, deep cuts, things that, like, some of the stuff isn't even, like, considered actual... Like, some of it's, like, mythology about the galaxy. But, like, a lot of it has to do with, like, um, creatures that used to be around in the galaxy that no longer are. There's nothing, like, super specific, but that's the general theme of what these books are. Like, old things. Old things that some people don't even believe to be true. Um, yeah, that's sort of the, the vibe you get from this room. Is the mirror small enough that I could, like, take it with me? It's like a it's like a body mirror. You'd have to pick it up. Like maybe cock could carry it, but you probably would struggle uh, if you tried to take it with you. If I like broke off a piece of it, would it still have the same effect? I wouldn't know until I broke uh, off a piece of it. You want to give me an arcana check to, to see if you would know that? Sure. Just explodes. You're not a very magical person, but you can give it a shot. I got a four. I don't know any. Well, uh, yeah. Give it. Give it a go. <laughs> no, you would assume that if you smashed it. It would probably not work, but you don't know. I, I turned cool to stones. Leon Reinhardt. I said, I found the word to open the casket surrounding the artifact. I say we take it and leave. I nod my head and I start uh, walking towards the door. I start heading towards the artifact area, I assume. All right, the two of them head out back into the hallway. You see Devon chilling. Uh, what is Devon doing as he, you know, chills in the hallway? Oh, well, just kind of, uh, I, uh, funnily enough, I'm kind of just keeping watch while I kind of go and, uh, play, uh, solitaire. Anastasia, seeing that you guys have walked back out, she'll head towards you guys. Uh, how, uh... I, I don't mean to rush you guys. I know it's important, but uh, I'm. What? How long do you think it will uh, take for reinforcements to get here? Um, reinforcements. I, 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 I like put my hands on her shoulders and I like look at her. I'm sorry to say this, Anastasia, but um, the Therangian is currently dead in the water in space, and the enemy has taken over the entire base. And our only chance of escape is to take the Vindicta and get out of here. No reinforcements are coming. Oh, what? Well then, well then, let's go. Let's get out of here. We need the artifact so the enemy doesn't get it. One moment. <laughs> I turn around and walk to the artifact. All right. Uh, you, no, you, you get <laughs> move past her. All right. Who all is heading towards the uh, the, the the chamber area, basically? Are you moving as a group, or are you letting... Okay, so Erebus and Reinhardt are walking out. Anyone else want to go with them? I'll, I'll follow as well. Right, I'll you follow. clean up my cards. Anastasia stays back, sort of scared, not sure of the scenario. Um, Cock, what are you doing? I want to go look at what they were looking at in the glass cases. Bridges. Uh, the bridge is pulled back, so you're, cool. you'd have to find a way to activate the bridge and then yeah. walk across. I'm going to try to figure out how she, how she pulled out the bridge. Okay. Uh, give me investigation, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Got a four. All right, you're, you're looking at this table... Uh, full of controls and various buttons and you're like, okay, one of these definitely makes the bridge happen uh, but you can't figure <laughs> out which one. The rest of you, you walk up towards this door and there's an encryption on it but the sort of energy that would pulse through it is just gone. Um, what do you do? Is this where I put the code word in? The command word? Or is this like a door panel that's now broken. Uh, would you like to say the command? Yes. Alright. As rope her 
talk. You say Ascroperta and nothing happens. I don't remember how you pronounce it. I wrote it down. <laughs> I don't remember how the word sounds. Um, yeah, give me an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> See if you remember. Uh, uh, 21. Oh, it's Ascroperceta. Ascroperceta. As you say that, the sort of runes on the door glow with energy, and it says, Welcome back, Dr. Banks. And then the door opens. What do you mean we left the Astro Perks? Um, Inside, inside is further into the facility, just a small little carved out circular area. At the very back, you see a capsule, a metal capsule, small, probably would hold like I don't know, like a large bag. I'm trying to think, like three feet tall, maybe. Um, there is a... The, the thing that sticks out to you the most is at the very sort of corner of the room, of this c- corner of the circular room, at the very back corner, um, there's like this glowing blue rock. Um, and is the artifact? Or is the capsule the artifact? There's like this glowing blue rock, but there's these orange tendrils of energy that are coming off of it and attaching to the capsule. But there's also the entrance that you guys come from. There's these two tubes that look similar to the one that Devon slashed earlier, and they also connect to the capsule on the other side. So this is like a cryopod. Why he was, why they were researching long and forgotten things. Is there some dead race inside of this cryopod that we about to open and find out. I open it. <laughs> okay, you walk up. You look for a, a latch on it. And... We're spending the Prothean on <laughs> Eden Prime, Dylan. Let's do this. We're gonna pause right there <laughs> and head back over to Cock. What are you doing? Um, I'm playing eeny, meeny, miny, mo with the <laughs> buttons. Cock, you're like pressing all these buttons. Lights are flashing on and off. The doors are like opening and closing. Um, as we, you, you can sort of see through this window in front of you, you can see them heading out towards this area. As the door opens, they say this phrase, and the door opens. You feel in your mind like this pain just racks up really hard, really fast, and then you collapse. You fall onto the ground unconscious, and your mind becomes. Like you almost like this like ghost vision as your eyes close and you like your vision shoots up into the sky really far and you spin around and you're like getting really dizzy as you're like having this crazy vision and then suddenly you're back on the ship, the one you recognize from your first dream before the attack. And this woman's in front of you, this blue-haired woman, uh, elven woman with no eyes. She looks at you, very sort of... You don't think you like this woman very much, but she has a (laughs) familiarity to you. And she looks at you and she says, I understand you're scared. But this has become the only way. I wanted to do this mission, but you know, I'm too old now. She's like, on the she, you can tell, like, if she had eyes, she would be crying. Ooh. Please don't be angry with me, brother. I forgive you. She nods, and her chair that is floating about five feet off the ground comes down, connects with the ground, she stands up, and she says, you are the bravest of us. I know what he has become scares you at times, and you see the old him. But know now, what he has created has made an enemy that could destroy our galaxy. If we do not do this, then we have failed the very people we swore to protect. And then you see in front of you, this sort of small ship, um, looks like it would, it could fit a human, but um, it's gonna be a bit of a squeeze for whatever you are, you're not quite sure what you are. It opens up. Know this. This will not be an easy mission. But I promise that when the time comes and you complete it, we will be there for you. You can feel yourself moving forward towards the ship and getting inside. And as you see, and now that you turn, you can see the rest of this ship. And you can see 
about six or seven other creatures of various races all looking at you. They all just nod and in unison. They say, good, good luck, luck, brother. Do, Do this, this for, for the Omega, Omega Astra. Astra. And then the ship closes. And then Cock's eyes open up. And you're just covered in sweat. You just pains all over your body. And as that happens, Erebus, you open the capsule. Prothean? And this mist comes out. This, like... This stuff that was spraying out of the tube earlier, um, and walks out. Small, clearly a child, a small bipedal creature, but it's Hunter. alien to you. You're not quite sure what it is. The creature has these orange scales across its entire body and a large snout with two rows of sharp teeth, two yellow eyes with a unique shape to them. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna like beat around the bush too much because your characters dragon. don't know what this is. Yes, yeah. this is a young dragonborn orange in front of you. Its uh, mouth is slacked open and its eyes appear to be looking around. Um, there's a moment where it sort of like looks at its foot and like moves it forward a little bit. And then it like looks up hazily towards you, Erebus. And it just says, Mother? And then it just falls over. I, I try to ground. catch it before it falls over. Um, Alright, uh, ac acrobatics or. Yeah. Acrobatics. acrobatics, yeah. You have to feed him, William. Quickly. Oh, uh, 10? Alright, you like quickly pull your hands out, you catch him in your arms. And he just, he's clearly passed out. Um, uh, Devon, you would actually recognize. Give me a medicine check with advantage. Medicine check with advantage. All right. Let's see. 22 and 13. 22. Yeah, I mean, you, now with the context of where this gas is headed, you're pretty sure that this is some sort of really intense knockout sedative that they've just been dousing him with for, for ho however long. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah... This this young creature is very sedated in your arms, Erebus, but it just tell someone to grab the blue glowing rock that's providing energy. Okay, Does someone want to grab it. All right, and then I say, "Well, time to head to the Vendicta. Let's go, 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 go." All right, uh, Reinhardt, give me athletics check. Athletics, oh, okay. minus one for oh. you. <laughs> I got a 16. All right. Even though this rock is very large, as you pick it up, um, you don't even think it's really a rock. It's like a large egg, basically. But you carry it as the rest of you head outside the chamber. Um, Cock, you just come to. You can see Anastasia standing over. You're like, what the hell is going on? I, uh, uh, how do you, how do you uh, open the bridge? <laughs> She's like, ah, it's the access bridge button, and she slams it, and then you can hear <laughs> as the bridge extends over. Ah, fantastic! Thank you. Just I start right sprinting past. across the bridge. <laughs> yeah, we're we're all running for the elevator. At least I am, and I assume the three with me and Anastasia. All right, so the group plus Anastasia, Erebus holding on to this young, or yeah, Erebus holding on to this young dragonborn cock. You can now see it. Um, the the egg in the hands of Reinhardt and you guys head across this bridge. And as you do, Erebus, your passive perception, strong as always, you notice now the door all the way across the hallway has been opened and standing in front of you, this armored, gray armored tiefling just staring at you. Do you guys stop or do you keep running? How far away is he from the elevator? Um, he's closer than you, probably about 20 feet. You guys have about 40 feet left to go. Um, well, I could make it, if we all just dash, could we make it before you could do anything and we could start going up? Well, he could also dash towards it. That's the problem. Um, but I he wonder, just, do you, yeah, basically I'm asking, do you guys stop or do you keep going? I keep going. I'm trying to make it before he does. Okay. He runs, he, he also dashes towards the elevator and he stands in front of it and he pulled, he puts his hand out like for you guys to stop. I run up and give him a high five. <laughs> okay. Oh God, you, I know what this gesture is. <laughs> you run up, 
you give him a high five. He just looks down at you, and he says, "Thank you for collecting the artifact for me. I will be taking it now." And Shoot him in that's the where face. we're gonna end today's. Shoot session. him in the face. <laughs> shoot him in the face. <laughs> Uh, I said shoot him in the face before you ended the session. <laughs> well, uh, he's dead. DM now. override. Not a good. <laughs> Easy.